Okay, now I'm not excited. Whoa, now I'm really excited <laughs> to talk about something. Does that help? Yes. You're like, okay. <laughs> You're like, yeah. La la la. Oh, yeah. And I want to tell people what I want help with for Watch of the Vault. All right. This is a shout out. Hello. Oh. Welcome to Jason Cabinet Experience. I'm your host, Jason Cabinet. Our guest for the second time is my friend Kelly Kirk, financial literacy enthusiast and Watcher of the Vault's director of content and innovation. Kelly, thanks for being here again. I appreciate it. What's up? First is the worst. Second is the best. So glad to be back yeah. and it'll be the best. <laughs> <laughs> so give us a, like an update on how your company's doing since the last time you've been here. Yeah, Walter of the Vault's going really well. Um, I kind of made an a, announcement to anyone that like cares on my LinkedIn yesterday or two days ago that um, I really want to like, you know, you have to be intentional with your focuses. And I really want to focus a bit more on like studying personal finance for myself. Um, and it's because I've gotten Walter of the Vault in this kind of great place where it's self-sustaining. And just to like kind of go back in history really quick, um, my business partner, Karen Tenenbaum, who um, passed away recently, um, she kind of like snuck me in to this event and it was kind of this like weekend event where you only the people that were allowed like had to be making a hundred uh, over six figures seven figures and like the idea is they're like burnt out ceos that are making like multi-millions of dollars and then they go through this like week-long event that's like workshop courses and it kind of teaches you how to like you know get out of this like you know the like stuckness and then um create that, you know, bring your business to that next level. And what they'd found is that, you know, like the biggest common theme in a lot of these CEOs, or at least what resonated most was that everyone's trying to do everything and that these CEOs are so burdened down and making these companies successful. And yet they feel like they can hardly even sleep because there's so much that needs to be done. And so they were retraining all these CEOs and stuff to, they said like, you know, I always say like my spirit animal is like um, an octopus, right? Or maybe I have like eight different skills I'm really good at. And one is design, one is music, one is teaching. And they said, really find people who have that same perspective as you, that same taste in music, that same passion for teaching and hire those people to like, you know, display that amount of energy and excitement in that category. So I've been taking that mindset the past kind of year, extremely intentionally to bring on people that I can trust to kind of take over and force myself to step away, step away, step away. So it's really gotten to this point where I have a really great team, a lot of leaders. Um, and it's, it's growing like really well. I have a huge vision. And so, yeah, it's going really, really great. Um, and I think here, you know, within the decade at the most, it'll be a, hopefully a household name and helping, helping people with financial literacy. So Kelly, y'all actually like get ready to interview, to interview and hire some teachers. Are, are they being called teachers or are they being called something else? Yeah, teachers definitely. Can you talk about like what kind of like what kind of teacher you're looking for, like what characteristics or like what what should someone have already within the values of characteristics that would make him like someone you want to hire? Well, I'll say this. Um, this is my second round of bringing on teachers now. The first time I thought it'd be really fun. I, I would love the idea of I feel like um, of glamorizing education and glamorizing being a teacher. Uh, because right now it's like less and less like like that, like you know, the education is like imploding from the inside out. And so everyone's like quitting their teaching jobs and frustrated. So it's time for like new people to come in that are excited about it. And I'm like a self-taught teacher. So at first I was trying to kind of bring on like all these people who are like, wow, I love financial literacy. I'm so excited to start teaching. Like I've never done this before. And so there were just like too many things that they weren't familiar with and too many questions that I was like, ah, and then I wasn't, you know, being the best leader, but it's also because I kind of put myself in this position where I had, they had way too many questions to ask me. So now I'm bringing on people. I'm um, actually the, the company I work with hosting classes host a bunch of teachers, like individual teachers and then organizations. And so they shouted out to all everybody like, you guys want to work together? Let us know. And then all the teachers could look and pick the organizations to work with. Um, and so anyway, all these teachers have multiple five-star reviews. Like they're all like really, really qualified, familiar with teaching online. They know the system. And now uh, they're coming to work for us. And again, I've got an assistant who in the past I would really be taking over this. If I had free time, I would think about it. You know, I kind of used to be like in my free time, let me think about Walter the Vault. And now I'm like, no, girl, if you want to study in your free time, focus on, you know, stocks and stuff and let your team do it because they're amazing and they do such a good job with it. And so it's really helping me kind of grow that sustainably with the team. So Kelly, what does the teacher actually do for y'all? Like, do they have an online class that teach 30 kids? Like, what's a like a day-to-day -day for a teacher that's going to work for you? Right. And any honestly, if anyone watching wants to apply, go for it. Um, or anything that I'm talking about, you want to try? Like, I I'm kind of like, I want to build you know, I don't know what I'm doing. I do and I don't. I know what I want to build, but um, you know, I'm kind of open, open door to anyone wanting to join. Uh, you know, to at least give it a try. 
So what are the teachers? We have all of our classes on a website. It's kind of like, a, you know, like a Netflix almost where you select the classes and then they just host them and they just click through and it's a one to one class. Um, and, you know, I'm kind of modeling something I've seen done really well before. And yeah, they just host a half hour class. And, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, what I've seen in the past is parents, especially with young kids, love to like kind of watch over. And I think that's going to be a great appeal to our classes is because it's that personal finance. It's all these basic values um, that are, you know, helpful for everybody to get a refresher on. So Kelly, in a pre-talk, you, you said you're going to give a speech at Columbus, Ohio. Oh, so, yeah, maybe you're like Florida. Cleveland or some 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 so, place. Ohio, place somewhere in Ohio. Yeah, Ohio. See Cal, see name. That's somewhere in the Midwest. I'm giving a speech. I think it's I think it's Columbus, Ohio, but I don't want to, you know. And what are you going to talk about, like? Well, I'm talking books. five innovative ways to teach your kids to teach kids about money. So that's one speech I'm giving, and then I also just applied for another one. And the name I like also it was Dollars Make Sense: Why Kids Love learning about money and i'll just tell you like we've been trying now to sell wall to the vault for like over 25 years not me but as a whole and everyone's always like i and i really don't like that they use this word for they're like it's not sexy enough and i'm like dude you guys just obviously aren't teaching the right stuff because it's like so freaking fun like it doesn't need to be sexy but it is fascinating to kids talking about taxes income spending like they love like they love learning about money and so i think if people can um, yeah, be told that again like they'd be so surprised and it's so useful uh, yeah, yeah so the models dollars make sense yeah, that one's dollars make sense. Okay. Have you ever heard of this rapper named like DJ Quick? No, but I know he, there's a famous... he, has a, he has a song called Dollars Make Sense. Oh, I know there's a book called Dollars and Cents. Yeah. So I was trying to like bust away from that. Yeah. I we, we flow I that. probably should have known this song, but probably lots of people know it. Well, I'm hopefully it's the lyrics that we we are uh, in line book, with. Probably good. Oh, I'm like getting blushing. I'm like, uh oh, what's it going to be saying? And I did not see this is the thing, though. I always say your intentions are really what matter. You know, you can always um, make mistakes. <laughs> so let's see. <laughs> but it's probably a good song. I know it's hard to type on demand when, you know, okay. right? All the, you know, time semi matters. Maybe it's OK, here we go. Dollars and cents. See, there's a book called Dollars and Cents, too. Thank goodness. I mean, you know, just in case. You guys, the audience is exciting. They're getting a live reaction video out of this also. Nice. He's gonna send it a minute. I love it. Yeah, this is like from the nineties or something. So you totally you wouldn't know yet. No, but it's awesome. I know. I was like, I love it, and then I sip my coffee like meme ish, but I really do mean I love it. Yeah. I've just been waiting to be able to sip this because it's hot. Yeah, it's hot as fuck. Yeah, the coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I said, it's like you don't you don't think it'd be so hot because it makes it makes it so fast. Yeah. Mm. Well. Yeah, so that's a song from the 90s, yeah. That made me think of it, yeah. Right. Um, and so do you, you already have, like, a draft of your speech done or anything like that, or you still have to work on it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, some of these, you have to, like, present the whole thing, you know? Okay. So it's, and I guess, like, you know, the fun thing you could talk about there and, like, be honest, and I even need to look in the mirror and be honest, is, like, you know, I kind of want to hint at the fact that I have this fantastic show that I'm trying to make, and, you know, well, well, like, well, to the vault. But you don't want to go up there and be a commercial, you know? Yeah. So, so finding that, you know, beautiful balance of 90% yeah. Info 10% well to the waltz. And you know how many people are going to be there? Like how many people are going to talk in front of? It's the 64th annual, so okay. you think it'd be more than one person, right? No, be more. Yeah, that's probably. In. I don't know though. But then again, I saw a picture. I saw a picture. I don't know. We'll see. I never really have expectations. Mm -hmm. I will say though, I'm not going to say which city, but I do go to a lot of random events. And one time I went to a city of blah blah blahs lunch event to meet, you know, someone or whatever in network of everywhere. The lunch paid for by the city was the lamest catering of yeah. all. That's, it was that's lame wrap, thing. lame cookie, lame chips. And it was one of the most expensive. So yeah. anyway, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Step up your catering <laughs> or whatever, or don't. But yeah. Hey, Kelly, anything else you want to talk about Walk to your company before you move on to all the stuff of the stuff? Okay, so I guess I would say like wall to the vault, you know, um, and I even made this in my post that 
the, the the more I can learn this stuff, like, you know, like stocks, finance, that's, you know, like what the heck, all this kind of complicated stuff and then simplify just these basics, um, the better. And so I think like, you know, that's why I want to get back to stocks and studying all that stuff for a bit, just for fun for me. Uh, and I'm writing a lot of music. And so one thing I want to do now is really um, turn up my music. Like, okay, I'll tell you a funny story. When I was a kid, um, like me and my neighbors all did this like band audition where everyone played a different instrument. And then we all decided as a group who was the best at each instrument and then who would be each band, like, you know, like member of the band and what they would do. And this is not like, you know, okay, this story, like I, I was thinking about this recently, like, well, it was a little rude, but I decided I was the best at everything. So we weren't able to make a band because I was like, I just can't work with these people. You know what I mean? Which is like now I'm like, oh, my God, you know, like that is so stupid. But, you know, when you're young, you know, whatever. So I, so part of me is like, OK, now I'm getting if anyone wants to join my band, come on, you're going to learn how to play the drums. You're going to learn, you know, at least try. Like, if you really want to try, like, let's go. I have quite a few people that have worked for me for a few years now that like they're awesome because they didn't stop giving up and we really figured it out. Uh, but my point is, um. Like, I want help writing music. Uh, I want help writing music so that my music is really awesome because I guess it's gotten to that point that I've been writing music now and I like really just figured it out. Like taught myself garage band and I've done it, you know, over the years and now I'm making this music and I just like, I'm sick of waiting on people. Let me make it myself. And now I want to make this music again. I want to make it better. I want to make it high quality. I want to make it like, <laughs> so everyone enjoys it and not just like niche audiences that like me and that, you know, so it's just like epic, great music. So if anyone's, um, musician producer especially in the seattle area where like you know you don't want to work together you're excited about financial literacy um and you you know like songwriting and I don't know, yeah that's kind of what i'm looking for right now so what kind of music do you play like is any certain genre or all oh, types okay i love that you asked this question so i really want to make um like you know i think it's very schoolhouse rock but it reminds me like this 90s song it reminds me of like remember like the 90s and you know like all those like those classic cds where they'd be like the greatest hits and they'd have like like all these different kind of genres, but like they were all related to like the seventies and it kind of, you know, was this sort of compilation, like even a musical, right? It has kind of a bunch of different um, themes. And so like, I have a country song called like credit is a promise. It's like kind of a sad song. Like, credit is a promise to pay and debit means you're paying right now. And then uh, like, I have a Christmas song I wrote. Like I want to have like every genre, like nothing's off the limits. And I just think whatever, yeah. So what's your, like your, best instrument that you play the best oh i mean i don't play any, any instruments i'm really just doing it all in garage band okay. like okay. I, yeah like i'm just like blah, 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 and then i just get like rabbit hold into my own music okay so yeah that's why i think you know and i think like people want to do things themselves and that's you know maybe i said this before like that's how i told you know my my dad even like and you know the people who know me best is like i think this can be amazing i just need to find qualified skilled people to help me and then i can still be you know doing everything myself quote unquote because i'm leading it but getting like ex excellent help to help me make that come true. So. All right. So next we're going to move on to all this. To all this stuff. Yeah. So what is this stuff like? Um, Let me summarize. Okay. What, so what, what, what's all this still going on with like these stocks and everything? I think. So like, okay, again, I guess I'll bring up my dad really quick. So I remember when I was young, he gave me this idea of like, figure out who you want to be when you grow up. Like, look at these successful, like look at anyone and look at like someone who has a job you want to have and then look how they got there. And then after COVID, you know, my whole life, like I said, like, I kind of want to have always something I believe in. Like, like I go to bed at night. Like, I feel like it's like good and true and value focused and helping people and not taking advantage of not scamming, you know, trying, trying to do something like good and I'm proud of and, you know, like a legacy, you know, I can leave behind something great. Uh, and so I think over COVID and also I'm kind of like, you know, into math, logic, problem solving, strategizing any game I love to kind of beat or just move on. Um, and so I think over COVID too, I started seeing all these YouTubers who were my age and like multimillionaires and they hadn't even graduated college. And so I was like, dang, that'd be so cool to be like, so, you know, like rich and successful that you didn't have to like worry about it all. Like there really seems to be something here to finance and investing in the sense that it's like, it's so efficient. Like it's so efficient because if, because the whole point of work is to make money and then you're making all that money so you can live your life. But if you cut all the crap out of there, forget about work, and you simply just learn how to make money, then you don't like like it's it, like you know. I guess I just realized it was kind of like a, like a hack. Like and and then and then again, the more I would listen to these people talk who were really successful, they'd say like all the money makings and investments, all the money makings and investments. And I'm even someone who grew up like you know my grandpa like every day would just like watch the stock market, and I always would think like what is he looking at? And so the more I started learning about how much money you can really make from investing, 
I realized like, okay, I'm making Walt to the Vault. I I pay for Walt to the Vault. I'm not paid um for Walt to the Vault because I just saw the value in it and I can afford right now. Like I could like because of my passion with investing and because of my success in investing, I've I've been able to afford to like use the cash I made like a couple of years ago and really, really, really live carefully by a budget and keep building out, building out this stuff. So I, long story short, I think it's like a life hack where you, of course, like work and create something great. Like I'm trying to, but also the more time you put into this, you can just learn how to make money and then really find these amazing opportunities. So Kelly, what is the, I think it's called a short stock. What's a short stock? Okay. Shorts. Oh, and I heard this on that movie, Dumb Money, which I finally ended up watching. It's when you bet a stock price will go down. That's basically what I mean. So you're, you're betting that the company's going to do bad. Yes. And so you have a share that you loan away and you make money off of it, money off of it. And then you need to buy it back eventually, but you you bet that it's going to be cheaper. So buying it back cheaper. Ha ha. You make money while it's hanging out, hanging out. And then eventually when you own it again, you're buying it cheaper. Okay. And so it's kind of this whole risky thing. Um, but yeah, you buy it cheaper. And so the way it would work, of course, is they could put, you know, billion dollar bets that these companies would go down and they'd work with the media and they'd work with everyone. And, and then they'd successfully get companies to go to business. So they'd make money. I mean, it's, it's really like a sponge just making money off of companies in every single way possible. And so do people do things on purpose to make sure the company fails? Yeah. Okay. Isn't that kind of unethical though? Yeah. Okay. And that's the, big, the biggest frustration about the stock market is because I like, and that's even, I, heard, I I quoted it. If you like looked on my LinkedIn where someone was saying like, we, oh, it was this guy and he, his name is Peruvian Bull. He's like, you know, his online social name and he's really into GameStop and he was learning about Bed Bath & Beyond and he grew up with a traditional financial financial literacy background and he said this is, that's the craziest thing of all of this is he said GameStop made him question all of this is because you grow up in school and in finance saying every stock price is true, the market, market runs well, it's, you know, it's honest, it's, you know, everything and, and it turns out the whole, like, sorry, the whole thing is kind of like, you know, so yeah, and it's frustrating as someone, you know, like I'm trying to, you know, so I'm like, again, I feel like so much is working at the top of your intelligence and like, you're like, ah, so. And so you, you started doing this stuff and you said during COVID? You know, yeah, but at the same time, I kind of like was always taught to save money. And then I was taught about like mutual funds growing up. And I was like, it's like no one ever took the time for me to really get it, though. It'd be more where you're like, OK, like you're trying not to lose face. You're like, OK, I get that. Cool. And then later, you're like, I don't know what he's talking about or I kind of do. And then um, over COVID, I think I said before, when I was in Shanghai, I was so like lonely because it started getting more and more cameras and all my friends were leaving and you know getting kicked down and everything and like so creepy creepy and i remember like turning to netflix and just thinking like wow netflix is such a comfort and this like lonely thing and, and i saw so many things about shanghai that like were futuristic and why wouldn't they come to america so i felt like netflix was something i could put a chunk of money into and given the way that i understand how stocks work if a company does better your money goes up uh, I would. So I put some money into Netflix when I was living in China and I made, you know, plenty more money than I needed in China. You know, a couple, you know, your your cost of living was low. So, you know, $15,000 went really far. So, you know, so, so if you, uh, I, I wasn't putting $15,000 into Netflix. Um, but the point is like, you could live off $15,000 for a year and still have a thousand or two to invest. And so I put a large, you know, I put, I put about a thousand dollars into Netflix when it was at $90. And then a couple of years later, it was up at 400. And so, Right around then is when I'd been learning about Dogecoin, literally. So you can see here, like, like on January 28th, everything started, like all these stocks, like kind of went off the, off the chains. And um, on January 27th, I invested for the first time in Dogecoin, big, hard, good. That's like Elon Musk, Bitcoin, right? Yeah, exactly. There was just a lot of attention paying all around it. And there was this like, so fun. Like I said, there was and didn't Elon Musk do that as like a joke sort of kind of? You know, it's hard to say how much of a joke it was. Like, it was, it was a joke. And then again... I was, like, trolling someone or something. Like trolling, but at the same time, I think he's kind of not trolling. I just think with all of this, it's really going to take... Like, it takes patience. But I would not be surprised if Dogecoin has huge value in the future. Like, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Or, or no value. So, yeah. And so, how do you decide what to invest in? What's the process? Um, I think, like, what relates to like, most... Why, like, why Netflix versus all the other stuff you could invest it in? Oh, right. Okay. Oh, I guess at that time, I just felt like, uh, oh, okay. Like, I know this company. I get their thesis. I could predict their future. I know people like it. I think the best is yet to come. You know, like, for me, I was just like, I think that um, this seems like something to try. And so, yeah, uh, that's how I picked that one. Okay. And then it got to the point that Dogecoin was doing well. It, like, flew up, and then it went down. And then I was like, dude... How much, like, look, okay, and then I started learning about, like, like, a lot of people learn about um, investing as kind of this, like, 
you know, like keep it there forever because you got it at 90, but who knows? It could be 900 by the end. And I'm like, dude, even if it's 900, that's only doubling my money at this point. And so I wanted to take all of my money out and put it into Dogecoin because it was just Netflix money. You know, it wasn't all of my worth. It was just this small pocket of money that like, woohoo. And then I was like, Dogecoin. And then I got talked into only doing half, which, you know, like it's fine. Like, you know, again, it's all a learning journey, but I did. I put half of my Netflix money into Dogecoin and then it excelled. And then I started realizing something's going on here. And again, that's where everyone kind of stops telling the story. It's like, that's where the common people, the common knowledge is, is like this January 28th, everything ended, but actually a whole bunch of crazy things were done. And ever since they've just been, they, you know, the people in charge are just kicking the can, kicking the can, kicking the can, kicking that can, putting this off, building it up, building it up, building it up, building it up. This point it's building all this pressure of buying for literally three years that at any point it's going to like, sorry, explode. And I, I feel like I'm, yeah, I really feel like it's like a Bitcoin, you know, like when Bitcoin was in the pennies and now it's, you know, yeah, I think that's what's going star, on. star stocks. That's many with um, GameStop, Bed Bath and Beyond, those kind of companies, right? For what? For short, for stocks, short stocks, those like GameStop stuff. Well, and... shorts that you could do on any stock. Okay. So heavily shorted stocks are stocks that have like so many shorts taken out. It's like it's even to the point. Like, let's say you had a stock in your company and you sold 100 shares. We're seeing that there's shorting like 700 shares, and you're like, where'd those extra 600 come from? And also, why are zero? not shorted like why is why are you 7xing that my company will like and it loses value i mean it's like doing all these things so heavily shorted stocks th there's a million and so then the news will also pull in other stocks that aren't exactly related to any of this at all and they'll go like look there's another you know they call it like meme stock meme stock and then everyone's like dude no like there's kind of only like a couple there's and there's only like two main 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 ones i would say which okay. are gamestop and amc but any any corporation be Short sector, right? Any stock can be short. Any, like any stock can be short, on, shorted. Bone. They can all be shorted. Okay. And then naked shorting. So shorting is like when you take um, the stock and then you loan it out. And naked shorting is when you pretend to stake, take a shot, stock. So you actually just sell absolutely nothing at all. So can someone like do this in a, like, in a way like do a hostile takeover of a company? Yeah. Okay. And I think that's like a strategy that's been happening for decades. And I think that's what everyone's finding out. Now everyone's like, what the heck's going on? You know, I thought that's it. You know, and now it's like, yeah, a little bit. And so YouTube, there's actually a pretty big community of people talk about this stuff, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Huge. Yeah. Huge. You know, it's YouTube. It was Reddit, but everything's getting cut off. It's, I mean, it's every 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 place people can talk, people are talking about it. Uh, the only thing is, I would say it's a very... And all of them have pretty, like, large followings, too, right? Yeah, but also I would say it's very community-based. Like, I feel like everyone talks to everyone. It's not like one person's better than the other. It's because this hive mind, like so many people pick up on different things and there's so much to pick up on. And it's, it's almost like, you know, it's like an escape room where there's like all these different puzzles to solve and figure out what's going on here because it's taking so long. Yeah. So one guy is a guy named Alex Becker. Yeah. So he's really into crypto. So when I first was getting into... Um, and when I, when I was, so, I don't know what that was talking about, but, uh, but actually he has really good advice at the beginning. Even the intro is his videos are awesome. And when I first was getting into crypto, I was watching this guy a lot. He's pretty famous. And the, the thing about YouTube is once you start getting into investing, it shows you these common people at first. And so Alex Becker is very popular um, at first. Uh, at least I think, I think he shows up a lot. He's really like cocky, but then has some cool advice. And so at the time I was buying Dogecoin, everyone was like, diamond hands, diamond hands, never, ever sell, never, ever sell. So, so diamond hands, is that like a symbol? Like your hands are literally diamonds and you okay. will never get these shares out of me. Okay. Paper hands means you can take my shares. Okay. Diamond hands, like you're never, ever getting rid of these shares because we really, so he kind of was, so back then, back in those days, everyone was diamond handing, diamond handing, diamond handing. That was way before all this research. And so he was saying like, look at the dodo birds. Like, are you about to di di diamond hand off a cliff? Like, some of this stuff isn't going to hold value. So diamond, so like he said, no one ever lost from selling early. And so kind of listening to him, taking some advice from my family, um, I was like, that's true. And Dogecoin wasn't kind of this huge movement or anything. It was kind of just this like funny thing that I happen to make money off of. So um, he has a lot of really, really amazing videos, though. He talks about like <laughs> caffeine, alcohol, life strategies. Yeah, and he has like 1.4 million subscribers. So a lot of people would listen to him. Yeah, he's amazing. He has really, really good just all around life advice. And so I think his four four life skills, I was cracking up because I watched this. I said, oh, my God, I'm doing those. It was like over COVID. <laughs> the first one was like move away from friends and family and focus, you know, and it was so funny because over COVID I did. I totally moved away from like almost everyone I knew. And then I really got focused on stock. So not bad advice. So are you a fan of Elon Musk? Um, you can take him or leave him. God, you know, I think all of that kind of stuff is so complicated. <laughs> I'm like, next question. <laughs> Let's see, you know, but it's really hard. It's, it's so hard to see. You know, the thing that everyone says is like, oh, he could cure hunger. But it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is another um, another guy who's really famous on the YouTube algorithms. 
he started off super meet Kevin. He actually ran for governor of um, California too. And he started off like really into this AMC GameStop thing. And then I think he just has a lot he's focused on. He has a lot of connections. And so he didn't stay like really, it, it kind of sucked to see because he was like really, you know, like this is a big like stand. Like I think we've really found the, like Achilles heel and like in a great moment to give like the middle class, like this huge surge of wealth. And he kind of turned. However, he has just amazing videos. Like when I started learning about my credit score, he has this video of like how to make your first million. He's one of the people that I was like, dude, I'm just as smart as him. Like, let me figure out how he's doing what he's doing. And so this yeah. off subject, but is that his actual head? His head looked like his face. Ah, that's his head. Yeah, that's is his it, head. That's his like, head. It's like, it is, I don't know. Like, it's like, I don't know. Oh my God. I've seen him a million times. So I don't see what you're saying, but yeah, I watched a few more yeah. videos. That's his head. So all these people do this video, do they have like, do they have like any financial background? Do they have like, do reach? Like, how do these people like learn this stuff? Right? Like, why, right. why should some random person look at these videos and like trust them, so to speak? You know? Right. That other guy, Alex Parker, has like a couple companies he runs. He has like, he like dropped out of college, real estate agent, learned how to use debt to his advantage. I mean, it's just like kind of track records and they've just been around a while. But exactly. I mean, a lot of these people, you just take their word. But then again, all these, you know, certified financial professionals have no clue. Okay. They all think I'm crazy. Yeah. So, you know, I think these days everything is whatever. Do you have a favorite person you watch? Or you just like to watch all of them? Oh, you know, I have like, it's, it just depends on what. It depends on what. This guy's full. Yeah, this like Lou versus Wall Street. He actually recently died. Oh, did he? And he was one of the first people to come out. He's really controversial. Like, he was like really like an. This, this guy here? Yeah, yeah. He kind of would just leave these like, let me fill you in with what's going on. And like, he'd be like, dude, like in a couple years now, 50, like ch chicken's going to be $50. And he like, he would kind of like predict all this stuff coming. And he really started explaining like, how what's going on? They're selling fake shares uh, anyway. But then he it seems like he was actually getting paid by banks to start giving poor information. And then he recently. That, that's a good point. Like these people, they make the predictions. Does anyone track track them? Like suppose like like that. like the track record and the yeah. receipts. And exactly. And some of my favorite people, they're like, look, look at my receipts. I've been I've been right forever. And so like and then again, this like guy for real, for real is so funny too. like a lot of these people. And he like is really in the AMC community. He's like a rapper and he like grew up on like Nickelodeon. And so he writes all these like like he leaves like tangent videos, but also he writes all these like hilarious songs, like kind of metaphors for what's going on in the community. And so, again, it's like I mean, there's just so much of like like community and information and fun and like not like, like knowledge coming from you everywhere. But like really people call people out when they're being like, you know, unreliable and don't have receipts. And, like, where'd you, you know, so it, it is this hive mind of is the it? best of the best or okay. uh, except for now that, you know, things are getting taken over. You might know this, but like so this is community on YouTube doing all this stuff. What do you think that people like the actual, like the financial people, like JP Morgan's Bank of America, what do you think about all the stuff they're putting out? You think they agree with it or they disagree with it? Freaking out. Freaking out. Freaking out. Because exposing them. the cat's them, out of the bag. Exposing them. Yeah. I think they're freaking out completely. And I don't, I think, I think I really, I mean, I think the entire system's going to be totally revealed, reworked, everything. I mean, really, like when you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, everything's getting exposed. That's what I wrote recently. I think this decade will be defined for its for its whistleblowers so in what, every industry. So, what's your take on like stuff like Bitcoin, cryptocurrency? You're a fan of it, pro it, Kalen? So, I think it's really cool because of the the real time action. And I've heard like a lot of rumors that they're possibly going to pull um crypto and Bitcoin and like, this blockchain into the stock market and into specifically GameStop and these companies are working. Because at the moment, when you give money to a company to buy a stock, they actually could never, ever put it into that stock. Or they could take 35 days or they could take three days. It's like technically right now, I think they're like T2. So I think they have two days to buy it, but also they can postpone it and do this and put it into this and put it. Little... There's someone that like they're talking about making it T0. So it's exactly what you think it would be. It's exactly what you thought the stock market would be with modern day technology, that if you put money into it, it affects it right then and there. And so that's an update they're going to get to. So I like that aspect of just, you know, tracking yeah. real time money. It's money. crazy. It's 2024. If you're like, you write a check somewhere, it takes like three days to go from one bank to the other. Yeah. Which is me freaking insane. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just, well, I guess the difference between how easy is it to spend money versus get money too. It like takes a long time to receive money, but you can spend it in a second. Yeah. They take the money out instantly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so what's this LUL? Oh, oh, just like a lull period. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, lull period. And then everything. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, okay, so and this is pretty much like your personal story of like it really stuff. Sucks, honestly, yeah. like so basically, like you know, this is that kind of period. Uh, you know, okay, so exactly. So after that January January twenty eighth, like everything, like the stocks went up and the things went up, and then all the news is talking about it, and then like like, like they just start crashing. Right. And everyone put all this money into it. And it was so new. And so exactly. It was this like lull period of like, okay, it hit the peak. And now, you know, the, the, the big money is back in control. And they've kind of been in control for the past three years, three, four years. And so especially at the beginning, it was that lull period going, oh, what did I just put my money into? And is this boat, right? Is this boat sturdy enough to carry all of us? Can AMC, can GameStop like, hold us because we really thought we were about to make really quick money here, you know, or not, or, 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 and of course, and take long, like I'm ready for it to take a while, but also like, wait a minute, what do we put our money into? So everyone, you know, I would say myself, like start studying businesses um, and their business models rather than just this squeeze opportunity. Yeah. So this is kind of off the wall question. You might not be able to answer, but like, let's suppose there's a financial person who like working on Wall Street, you know, we're saying 1891, he came to 2024. What do you think, what do you think his reaction would be? We would think, man, this worked out how I thought it would work out or like, What's going on here? I think devastated. And I think there's like, there's quotes. Um, it depends on like what year, you know, what year, what like this and that got written down. But there's like, there's a number of our presidents like in history that have said like, if the people understood the banking system, yeah. they would revolt. Yeah. And so I think that's what's happening is like, now I'm starting to understand and all these people are starting to get in. They're like, wait, we're like, wait, what? And so we're, maybe this is kind of a little bit of a way to um, like say this is enough. And it is by game stop i like stop this game has stopped i like like actually like there yeah there's just so much to it yeah, yeah. um so next what's um are you are you still investing in this kind of stuff like you still have investments oh yeah yeah, yeah definitely okay. so what's is that stock out that you, you haven't invested in yet but you're like researching I'm right now only looking at these two businesses right okay now. that's it yeah like there's i mean there's just so much waiting on this to be resolved and it's piling up more and more and more and so I'm not saying anyone should like buy these. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying anyone should copy me. Um, I just, I, for me, I think this is something I'm really interested in. I think it, at first it was an opportunity to make money, but, um, and they made these bets that these companies would go out of business. However, now these companies, there's no way they're ever going out of business. And so we've won. And so now it's just a matter of time until. So the, what's the best way for someone to learn about all this? Just watch YouTube videos or like do their own research? I, mean, I would say like pick one. Like, for example, let's say you wanted to, I would say just pick something and like, just start learning. Like, let's say, I don't know which one sounds like more interesting to you, like a video game story or movie theater for okay. you. Which one sounds more interesting? Um, like, probably video game store. Okay. Yeah. So like exactly, you could just like look into GameStop and just actually start looking, look at their, uh, you know, balance sheets, like what are their future Cause, predictions? Cause all of stuff's like public knowledge. Right? All of it, all of this is public knowledge, exactly. They, they do so, what's called annual stockholder report or something they do? Um, Quarterly. Quarterly, okay. And so I think that exactly, it's like, okay, I hear you talking, that's like this Dogecoin thing too. It's like, I hear you talking about this, I hear right. you talking about this, and then. You have to know what you're looking at, like, and just any random person right. looking at stock. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and, and for me, again, I used to really be obsessed with like celebrity gossip and finding like musicians, favorite musicians. Right. And, and so, you know, it's like a lot of it's like kind of common sense. And I think also as well, this like, you know, so many people are into this and so many people are interested. In, okay, why? And then just starting to learn for yourself. And so exactly, I feel like, okay, maybe there is something, maybe video games could be more popular in the future. Maybe this will be worth more. And yeah, just sort of, and then learning more and more how actually your maybe can actually be backed up by evidence, proof, and then also projections, math, like, you know, numbers. I mean, there's so much kind of math behind it. How would a company prevent themselves from being short stock? <sighs> Exactly. I don't think a way to prevent that. I don't think there's any way from being short sold. I don't think there's any way at all right now. And I think that's also why you have to think about you have to think about, you know, all of all of the Internet right now um, is undergoing like filter a filtration system. Right. And so even some of the most and we've all seen I don't know if you've seen Black Mirror. Right. We've all seen that episode where like the guy is screaming about how wrong everything is. And then they just give him a TV show to talk about it. You know what I mean? And nothing changes. They just let him have an hour on air once a week to talk about it. So at the same time, you have to think, okay, why are these people getting all these hours on air? Like, why is this something that's still existing, not being suppressed more, you know, kind of coming more and more? And I want to think it's because there's a lot of people who know more than I know, and they're really, really, really excited. And I think we've seen evidence of this. We've seen even like, you know, I don't know, John Stewart and someone say like, this is so crazy. Like we've grown up with decades and decades of people being afraid of banks and afraid of, you know, financial institutions. However, look at these apes, you know, that's what they call it. Like, look at these apes, they're coming in and they're not scared. And so I think, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, it's like that, that analogy of like a bunch of fish 
that like are about to eat a shark. Yeah. Right. And so I think that's kind of what's uh, going on here is this, you know, is this intelligence. And and honestly, it's 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 like it's like what we were taught isn't matching up to reality. And so we're like, hey, what's going on here? What's going on here? What's going on here? Like there's a guy that's tweeted at like the SEC or something like that, just asking a question a day for over three years. And like, hey, what's going on? What's going on? And so I think, you know, it's like, they're like, ah. So if you were to short stock, a short stock, do a short oh, stock. So anyone, oh, anyway, so you, so anyone can do that. So anyone can short out of this company. And now all these CEOs are actually coming onto these platforms on YouTube saying like, yeah, we've had this happen. Like, ah, I've had so many, like, like people hate to IPO because their companies then go quickly get attacked or like, you know, like taken advantage of. And so I think as well, that's what I'm saying. I think there's a reason that like we're getting this attention is because there's a lot of people in power that are so excited that we're like, look at what's, do you guys see what's going on here? And so I think there's a lot of people backing us up in a lot of these companies. So I think, again, this can turn around the commerce of, like, I'm like, da, 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 da. this will turn around the commerce of America. I mean, I think it'll turn around business. I think it'll turn around the quality of life. Like, I really think this is so much. It's like literally like going to empower the people, empower the businesses, like slap common sense back into all of this, you know? So what do you think the timeline for this happen? Is it like within five years, 10 years? Um, What needs to happen is this, like the market needs to be true to reality. And asking of that, I mean, the whole system might collapse. So like, it's like, it's like, 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 it's like the game is so broken that it's like, ah, oh, what do we do? Like, like, like you kind of need to start over. You know what I mean? It's like a chess game and now we're like off the board and we're playing on a different, you know, we were just looking at outside chess. It's like they're on a different street in the water, underwater right now. So how do you do that? Like, how do you just casually put it back on the board? Um, yeah, so it's really going to be a lot. I'm like, sorry, I got yeah. distracted. No, yeah, but then like, you know, but how do you do that? Because people are probably going to try to prevent the most they can. Like, how do you how do you do that? Like, all these people in the power, like preventing that? I know. I mean, I just think like enough people telling the truth and showing evidence. So so here's what I think like can happen. I really think this MOAS can happen. This like huge surge of these stocks, finally the reveal, because like what's going to happen? All these common people who also like are, you know, persistent and believe in themselves and a little bit intelligent or, you know, brave, but also like some people just buy, are suddenly going to get this huge surge of money. Then that's going to like, you know, boost the middle class. And also it will like give this power ship and protection to companies. I mean, I, I, I think this could kick off at any moment. I mean, even by the time this podcast is released, a huge announcement about all of this might come out and huge reveals. And it's really any moment because of how long they've been postponing, kicking all this stuff. I don't know. So, if you if you yourself would like to go out and and did, what and uh, like you place you in a short shorter stock, what company you think would be the most successful with that? Like, what if you would do that yourself? What company would you go after? I two. I have two. Well, I have one definitely right now, but it's only because again the people I listen to, and this isn't my idea. But also, hello, ever heard of school? Like that's where you learn formulas. That's where you learn like facts. You know what I mean? So other people' ideas and textbooks like are what you know you learn from and you pick what to hold on to. But um, one of my favorite people is called AMC Bigums. And he always talks about AMC, but also like the globe, the global economy, all this different stuff. And he was saying he thinks Allegiant, which is buy now, pay later, is 100% going to go out of business and possibly even from the start. It was never expected to do well. It kind of was just sort of put there to delay things. So uh, Allegiant, the company, I guess, buy now, pay later, more like from the math he's doing and what he's catching on to, um, I think that company would go. So I think that Allegiant, like, again, I'm not a financial advisor. I don't own it. I'm not a professional. I think Allegiant might go out of business. And so what I would do, I, I don't even know how to short a stock. I like, again, I only am trying to do like one thing at a time here. And that's, you know, that's what I told my financial advisor back in the past before they dropped me one of them because I had to pay so many taxes a few years ago. And I said, dude, like I'll learn about taxes next year. Like there's so much to do. And like, you know, of course, if I was like rich and powerful and knowledgeable and financially more literate, I would find someone to help me with my taxes. But, you know, one thing at a time. And so... Yeah, like like with them. So how does the company find no, out how do they learn their stocks are short? Like the financial guys right. says, Hey, this is going on or the stock market could doing this or people are selling it off. Like how like how does the CEO find out oh my I'm I'm in trouble right now? Right. I mean, I think uh, I think it's really hard to define. And then also there's a lot of risk if you say anything. Like for example, like the CEO Adam Aaron or and you know, they could have been like, Oh my god, I think you guys are overshorting our shares, but that actually like might pull up a lawsuit which would then freeze everything. They would have to count the shares. And then actually they'd have some sort of internal sediment and then like all the shareholders don't get anything. And so I think they're doing all this on purpose. Like it's just the way it is. And uh, Yeah, I guess that's something you need to learn more about from the professional. But I just, I mean, you know, the other thing, yeah, I think they like hire, you know, consultants to come in and yeah. give bad advice. And it's that like, you know, 
sell off all your valuable things. You know, I don't know. And so Fire how does, people. So it's called Bed Bath and Beyond, right? Yeah. How do they play in all this? They got sorted too, also, or exactly. So I so from what I understand, like Bed Bath and Beyond might be like the straw that breaks the camel's back of the entire financial <laughs> not to be dramatic um but i think bed bath and beyond like as a company was a sure fire set to go out of business for a lot of people and instead this guy ryan Cohn was able to save it was he like the ceo of there or something like well, what do you have to do with the company he first nothing at all he wanted to buy bye bye baby and um then he wrote a letter to the board saying, I think Bye Bye Baby is really, really, really valuable. I think it's actually like a four or $40 billion business. It's like a kind of baby clothing business. Yeah, yeah. I'd never even heard of it. And I'm a kid. I was like, what the heck? Like, I'd hardly even heard of it. And he basically wrote them a letter saying, let me buy Bye Bye Baby off of you. And they said no. And then they went out of business and they went bankrupt. And at the time, Ryan Cohen had bought in. So he'd be taken more seriously. The point is like that. Okay. Have you ever heard of like a fiduciary duty? They didn't follow their fiduciary duty, right? This guy comes in and says, we want to buy, buy, baby, baby. And then instead he, um, and then they say no. And so they like, it, it's like all this kind of stuff is like legal proof that they were making bad choices on purpose because they were purposely trying to bankrupt the company. Even when someone coming in offering $40 million says, um, and then, then the other fun thing about this. So, you know, Ryan Cohen did that exact same thing. He wrote a letter to the board at GameStop and he said that GameStop is the destination for gamers. And then he went through and totally saved GameStop. And he wrote exact same letter saying, Bye Bye Baby is a destination for babies. And so it seems like what he's done now is he's gone in and he's saving um, and he's going to go Bye 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 Baby. And then on top of that, it's going to uh, just come, it's completely throwing off other plans and really might bankrupt multiple mega banks. So do you happen to know Ryan's like background is it finance or is a CEO before like what his background? Was? Yeah, it's really cool. Like, so he, um, I guess like actually one of his family friends even came onto the show called the PP show, one of his like lifelong friends. So what I've learned about him is like when he was growing up, he was always into business. And then he had a dad who was like super into business and mentored him a lot. And then even when he was like 18, he learned like you could do business um, like from Costa Rica and save some money. And so like within like a day or two, he and his friends moved to Costa Rica and like move their business there to make more money. And then when he was older, he started that company Chewy. And his main focus was like customer delight and kind of competing against Amazon actually. Um, and so then Chewy was a huge success. Uh, you know, they're viral because like they always would send, like when your pet would die, they would send flowers, they would send refunds. They just like were viral and famous for having this like spectacular customer service, which actually if you stop and think about it, almost nowhere has true customer service as their priority. And so in some ways, I think that's the advantage to him as well, is he wants to take that customer service and he, and he sh screams it from mountaintops everywhere he goes. He's bringing it to GameStop. And now, as he said a thousand times, he wants to build an Amazon competitor. And so I think he's going to bring that customer service to an Amazon competitor, which will wipe Amazon. I'd pay five more dollars for great customer service. You know what I mean? And so that's really what it seems like is he's working with Bed Bath & Beyond. Um, and then even Overstock is involved in this. And the Overstock CEO is famous for short squeeze, for, you know, getting the short squeezes, like all this kind of stuff. You know, he, there's a lot of things he's really, he talks about. And a lot of people, a lot of big people don't like to see the former CEO of Overstock. And now he's all tied into this. It's so many people are tied into this that have a history of catching short sellers and, you know, screwing the system. So, um, so anyway, and the other thing, the other thing about Ryan Cohen and his history is that his dad taught him so much and his dad recently passed away and his dad's name was Teddy. And now this new company he's making is called Teddy. These new books he's writing are dedicated to his dad. And so just like, you know, a lot of this is putting trust into someone I've never met, Ryan Cohen and other people, you know, and like, and also using my logic, but it's like who in the world with already showing a heart of gold, writing all these books to your dad that has died is going to, you know what I mean? That's a pretty good bet. They're going to try their best to make this great. And it's with their whole heart. Like they're not going to screw over their name of their dad making sure like, it just, there's a lot of things that line up that show he's like in this for the right reasons. He wants to help the people and he's dedicating so much to this to his dad. You're like, come on, like that, like that's another like stamp of like sweetness that you can kind of trust that, you know, trust slash hope that he really is providing this amazing opportunity for people like you and me really to make millions and change the whole, the whole yeah. financial. Yeah. Having said, there's always a chance these people are scamming us, right? Totally. So like, how do you like, like you personally, how do you like, like try to like, be through the people like they're, is it real not real so i trust them not trust them like in a day i mean they're all trying to make money right right um but then at the same time he's not even making he's not even taking um a paycheck right now like he literally hasn't taken a paycheck for a year i'm sure he's getting paid other ways but well like he has 
stocks, but honestly, like at the same time, yes, but also he's already a multi-billionaire. And so I think money isn't the drive for a lot of people. Man, I'm not, I'm not making money on Palo Alto the Vault. I want to in the future, but also like money isn't my main drive either. Like I think maybe he and I think similar in the sense that if he can leave behind like a great legacy where when people think of his name, they're like, wow, like I'm so glad that person existed. Like, you know, like, and they create like a yeah. better world, like leave it better than they found it. I yeah. think that's kind of, you know, my goal too. Is- so how much do you know about the country of Salvador that like, switched to Bitcoin for the money? Oh, I don't hardly know anything at okay. all about it. I feel like I've heard it's like going well for them, but I don't yeah, know. I've heard too, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's, it's a big, that's a big move. Yeah. I think, yeah, I saw it like maybe four or five million people. It's not like a big country, but yeah. still. Uh, yeah, I think it's a good experiment. Yeah. It seems like it's going well. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's, yeah. But I mean, it's calculated. You know, at the same time too, I don't know enough about that. And so I, it's easy for me to go like, whoa, that was risky, but I am not a Bitcoin expert, you know? And so people look at me and they're like, whoa, you are a nut. <laughs> like you still think well, like like GameStop is a thing, AMC is a thing, and I and like I sure as hell do. And if you'll sit and like listen, you know I'll tell you why. But it, me, if you don't listen, I don't. You know I also I do and I don't care. But I'm sorry for you, like in a little bit. But I think El Salvador too. They're you know they're probably not stupid, yeah. so there's probably a lot of thought behind it. And hopefully it doesn't. You know hopefully it doesn't backfire. That would be that would just yeah. be sad. You know. <laughs> so from your point of view, and you're not an expert on this, but. Our current economy, you think we're in a recession, depression, the economy's doing good or? Oh, I think we're, I, it's like, I don't even, it doesn't even matter to think. This is what I'm learning. It's like, all you have to do is look at the math. Like all you have to do is look at the data and the math. It doesn't matter what I think. I know for a fact, like we're like, we are like falling and crashing in a depression. I mean, like you've seen like those, like, it's like, you've seen even the videos, like where it shows like someone's Amazon shopping list, the exact same yeah. was a hundred. Now it's 400. You know, and, and then on top of that, like you look at the math, you look at the national debt going up, you look at the spending. I mean, you even look at the reasonings. Like, so there's something I wrote about the other day and it's this guy, AMC Biggums posted about this, 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 this fund that they'd come up with that it was like, like to pay back, like, let's say everything went bankrupt. All the banks would put together this fund and all the banks would put money into this fund, money into this fund, money into this fund, money into this fund. So in case a bank went bankrupt, it was this self-sufficient fund and banks would make this fund. And then if a bank went bankrupt, the bank would pull from the bank fund. And, you know, like the kind of this brotherhood of, of giving each other lifeboats, like this bank community. They wrote into the details, by the way, if this fund is ever zero, we can take from the national treasury. Guess what the bank, guess what the account's been ever since it was started? Zero. So the whole time, all of these banks, it turns out for the past like 20 or 30 years, made this fake account and then hooked up this like little thing. And now for the past 30 years, all these mega banks keep getting bailed bailed out. It's something like $31 trillion where like, you know, all these banks like Bank of America, Chase, like actually, according to their business model, should have gone bankrupt 30 years ago. Instead, they're taking trillions and trillions of dollars from our government and our and our, our money. So, so remember back in 2008, or you might be too young for this, 2008 had like, like the Great Recession and all these like big time equity firms and banks went out of business and they were deemed too big a fail, right? Exactly. And so I think they just got bailed out. Like from what I'm understanding, what's coming like is they say it's like 2008 on crack because 2008 was never taken care of. It was just can kicked. Yeah. However, I'm like on a really optimistic person in the sense that I think Americans are smart. Clearly we have like really, 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 really smart people in our country. So I could see a way also if we somehow, you know, get our shit together and think, we could put the right people into place that we could turn this situation to our advantage and ideally like a global advantage where we don't bring everyone down. But, but at the same time, the way that we're going right now, it's still not looking good. I, I don't know if you've seen that interview of the guy that's leading our, our, our head of like the, the U.S. economy right now, and he can't even describe what is debt. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, I saw that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you were in power in 2008, you would let all those banks fail? Um, yeah. And that's, that's what this guy AMC Biggums was saying too. Like, I really, like, I don't mean to like keep it, but, but you know, it's, it's so nice having people explain things to you. And I was cracking up the other day because all college I was drunk and crazy and partying. And now I've become like this adult and I'm like, no social life. I love studying. I like love my teachers. So I feel like AMC Biggums is one of my um teachers. And oh, wait, remind me your question. You just asked me because I got too distracted uh, with that. If you had been power back 2008, you would have oh, all the banks. So that's what he was saying is he said, like, we have this feeling, like we have this sort of like citizen feeling like avoid a depression, avoid a depression, avoid depression. But actually that kind of mostly just apparently benefits like, you know, the financial system. And actually depression really wouldn't be that bad at all. And it might really be helpful in kind of getting everything back together. Yeah, well, I think you have all these people that talk about free market capitalism, right? But then they, they, they switch to socialism if the corporation fails. Yeah. What is this like corporate governance? I think yeah. they were saying like, that's what yeah. we're living in now. Yeah. Where like, 
you know, it's like that freaking oh book or whatever, where it's like year of year of depends, year of so freeze. Do you think there's such a thing as a company being too big to fail? Like like Boeing, they're having all these trouble with Boeing right now. Do you think Boeing's like people doors falling off? Do you think it's coming like Boeing's too? I think to fail. to fail is like members only club. Mm -hmm. I don't think it means anything except that you have enough friends, enough lobbies, enough connections that you're getting money. So for the companies free. Are it, on the it, market, they could fail. You're yeah, exactly. It's the fundamentals have gotten thrown out the window. That's why when AMC and GameStop are literally building these badass, amazing companies and their prices and being infected, we're like, what the heck? Like fundamental. Yeah, it's look at their businesses. Like, what are they doing? And I think, yeah, I think on purpose, that's where that's where uh, that's where you can look and see like, hey, which consultants were they using? And a lot of these use the exact same consultants. And they all were going to business. And you're like, wait a second, were those consultants actually in disguise? And so Boeing, it seems to be a GameStop situation. Yeah. And I think almost everything on the planet is a GameStop situation. So do you, not to be dramatic, but so do you think the U.S. economy runs a world economy, or the world economy runs the U.S. economy? Uh, like the U.S. Economy. I'm like he's got the whole yeah. world. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean? Um, I you know I think it, it, it I think it's a, like a little bit the, of a the U.S. Federal Bank, the point. War Bank, all these right. organizations across the world, right? I mean, we, at the moment, right, the U.S. Reserve is like the number one currency, but also at the same time right now, we're in a little bit of trouble. But again, I, oh God, I don't know. And with the dollar, I know it used to be like, mm -hmm. I'll make this up, but you know, a dollar used to be worth 70 cents. Now it's like 61 cents. It keeps getting degraded and degraded, you know? Yeah. We keep, we keep on printing money. and Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, we're number one. We're not number one as big of a gap as we were before. I, I know. Think. And it's just like kind of like, no, like everyone's like sad. Like, what? No, what do we do? You know, like, what do we do? What do we do? But. Yeah. Just keep educating yourself. And what what do you think is like the most important financial position in the United States? Like chairman of the board of the Federal Reserve, Secretary of Treasury, some kind of. Oh, my God. I need to know enough about what each of them do. But I just like I guess like all I can say to that is like, hey, you know, like I'm pretty sure like the Fed is a private company. And people don't know that, right? People think it's because it's Federal Reserve, the federal government. Right? Yeah, and I feel like but nothing people you're like true. taught, it's like they're hand in hand. And so again, it's again, and I'm like, what am I even saying? Like, I even halfway understand what I'm saying. And I think that's kind of like the fun of all of this. Like I said, like when I went to China, I started learning Chinese and I'm like, oh, cool. And so as I'm learning this financial stuff, it's like all making sense. And at the same time, I'm learning and I'm gonna make money off of it. And, you know, smarter, it's like, it's like a thousand benefits in one, but also like ignorance is bliss. You know, it's that yeah. balance of like yeah. ignorance is bliss, knowledge is power. And so like, that's why I'm trying to kind of. And tell me again, how long were you in China? Four years. And can you talk about how maybe the Chinese government, Chinese people teach their people about financial literacy versus how we teach our people about financial literacy over here? I mean, um, like I just know that they spend $7 for every $1 that we spend on kids on education. Um, <laughs> so, you know, like that's, I just like, I'm like, ah, uh, and I mean, I don't know. I just think, I think finance, it's like, you know, it's so hard to, it's so hard to say. I think conditions are very different there. And that like, and just from my experience, um, maybe the houses are smaller. Your personal space is smaller. You don't have as much you need or want to buy in a sense. It's, you know, it's all different. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's, 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 uh, you know, at the same time too, I don't know that there's as many, I don't want to say safe. But I do investments in China. Like, for example, I know if you buy an apartment like 60 years later, you don't own it anymore. And so I know that you have to be very thrifty with your money and your investments in China. And so it's kind of like and also in China is very family based, like like it's like every family for themselves. And so you, you teach your kids like what you want them to learn. And so, yeah, I think money, money is definitely talked about more there. OK. And what's this? Uh, I want to copy RC. That's something you want me to look at, or oh, sure. I mean, well, um, yeah. So you know, Ryan Cohen, he said like I put my money where my mouth is, you know, and um, I think I wanted to do the same. Is I used to have like all sorts of investments, you know, growing up, I would put them into like you know thousand dollars into this like large cap mutual fund, into this ETF, and then the more I started learning about investments, I was like, wait a second, I don't agree with Microsoft all the time. I don't agree with you know all these different companies. I don't want my money in there. Like I want my money where my mouth is and I want to put my money where my heart is. And so I realized I'm probably going to like be really hyped about life. If after, you know, he tweeted that and people would talk about it. If I do the same. And so I really like made that big move and I sold everything and I put it all into just only stuff that I can stand behind. Cause I don't want to be like a hypocrite, you know, like I just kind of. So you do like more like values based investing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. I feel like you're like, I feel like I'm we're, we're learning that money can be a tool especially in kind of this fight in this fight against wall street so, so i want to play let me ask you this i suppose there's something you you like you're 100 for right obviously invest in that but i suppose there's something like you know like you're like we'll say 
you agree with the 70%, but this is 30%. Would you still invest in it? Like, what's your cutoff point, right? It's hard to agree with something 100% right. of the time, right? I think, like, I think, I mean, these two things I'm basically 100% about. And so that's it. Exactly. It's like, it's like, again, you said, like, how does anyone have the time to learn about this stuff? Well, just pick one or thing, one or two things to learn, you know? And so I think that's why I just can focus. Like, if I can find more businesses that I think look like great. So you only business. invest in stuff that you 100% agree with? Yeah. And like, right okay. now, it's literally these two. Okay. You know, my, I mean, I have very, like just a couple things I'm invested in right now, even in like my whole life. And as far as stocks, it's, 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 it's actually well, it's four. Okay. And they're all related to this. What stuff. are some products or industries you would never invest in because it doesn't match your values? Um, I'm like, uh, vintage cars, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't know. And then I guess, like, I guess, you know, I like, it's so hard to say. Like, I think everyone's, different but i definitely think like luxury items um have their place every now and then because in some places you stand out if you don't look nice but I, in general i'm not really like a luxury item person too much only because i i think they actually can be more they add more stress than uh beauty. and so what's this uh the cat system what is that okay so this is kind of cool so actually this is something so, like, so what does cat stand for oh god computer automated transactions okay and it's kind of like, this is really, really, really like this cat system is super cool. So basically everyone's screaming, screaming, you know, like the stock market has all this corruption in the stock market. Da, da, da. So the cat system now is a tracker and it basically follows where every single share is going. And it turns out like a new technology. Yeah, it turns out for the, the whole entire time of the stock market, no shares were tracked. What? How's that possible? This just got implemented like two, three weeks ago. And it's because everyone's been going like, like what's going on? And now everyone's tracking everything, but no one's sort of implementing any rules yet. Now they just can see the crime, but they're not actually following up with it quite yet. But at least that's what I'm saying. At least finally people are starting to learn the language, learn the rules, go, what the heck? That's not even there. And then get these things implemented. And then it's funny too, because Roaring Kitty, you know, that guy who was into GameStop mm -hmm. and one of the movies about, he always says like, I'm not a dead cat. And so it's funny, like, it's like so many things you're like, did he know about the cat system? Like, is he like, like, like so many of these things are connected inside. And it's like, who runs this cat system? Like, is there a, is there a Wall Street system? Some yeah, random so it's like, you know, like, like the, like, you know, the police of the wall of Wall Street or whatever, you know, okay. the, you know, whatever. Yeah. Man, and like, like, like who runs it? Like, how do they make sure it's like not being like evil and, you know, unethical? I mean, like, exactly. They're watching it and they're, they're watching it be evil and not to go and not doing anything about it. But at least now we're like, look, there's a track record and now. So now there's little by little by little by little by little. There's a pressure on, there's the eyes on, you know, it's eventually what voting season or whatever. And so people need to kind of start. But for so long, they've been like, you know, not looking, not looking, turning yeah. the other turn. And so now enough people are talking. It's becoming, you know. Have you, I know you just came from New York City. Have you ever, like, you know, saw a person, went to Wall Street and observed it and see how, how it works or anything? Like, actually seen them on the floor, like, doing the, what do they do? Well, no, I almost got invited to go to the stock market, though, and ring the bell. Yeah. And I was going to wear a, like, T-shirt hinting at all this stuff. But <laughs> right at the last minute, we got invited. But no, I, I think um, I think a lot of it's done online. I don't know. I'm, like, I'm cracking up, too. And I, you they have like these drone videos of like people that like illegally use drones and spied on these companies because they were like up all night and these were happening, like making people stay late over time. And, yeah. and they were all like, you know, snorting. Yeah, you yeah, hear all the stories. Like, <laughs> so you hear like, some of the warm up people like they fucking work 20 hours a day, sniff your cocaine. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like on, 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 you know. So I don't know. I'm like, I guess you'd see that. Like you doesn't see people like, you know, but again, and I think. I think a lot of this is like that guy was saying, you know, it's like that, like you grow up and you're following your college instructions and you want to believe it. And, you know, and I think it's like, you know, like, like 90%, I think even like 90% of like, okay. I was going to say, I think like 90% of the world is like good, just in like bad leadership and they're just doing their best in a bad system. But at the same time, like you said, if, if you're going to put your money into something, how much do you need to agree with it? Uh, and you know it's i just think it's always great and powerful if you know more and more people that can be a little bit selfless and take a step away and you know yeah. stand up for and the opposite, opposite are you like pose like you're a moral person right but you're kind of doing bad on money and mm -hmm. someone says hey i know you don't agree with like blah 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 blah, blah dude but if you invest this money you make so much money and then you can do the stuff with the money right oh you know exa exactly exactly like use like, this to get like to how, that it's like step yeah, one to step yeah, like two how, like how morally are you right like what's your i mean exactly point? you know and i mean and then that's just for everyone to see and like i saw this i saw this like fantastic play that my friend was in she's like this traveling actress and um her name's awesta and it was called uh selling kabul and it's about like afghanistan and there's like a like the family's making money by making the army uniforms and they're like woohoo because now we can buy this tv but at the same time, it's the army that they hate. 
Yeah. You know, and so it's this kind of like exactly, yeah. and that's where I realized that's where I want to put my money where my mouth is. I'm always like, I'm not going to be funneling this broken system, and I actually want to work against it, and that's why I put my money in there to be a peg, a keg or whatever, a peg in the system, and the and I think it's and I, I think it's working. Enough people are seeing that if we we can peg the system and or whatever, whatever the heck that. No, so next, yeah. what's this um, comment? Right what's this M O A S S? Moas, mother of all short squeezes. I mean, how freaking good of a name is that yeah. too for all this? Moas is literally coming, um, because again, just think about it. It's like it's like the water's building up on the dam, and it's been people buying and buying and buying and buying and buying and buying and buying for years, and learning more and more and more, knowing that at some point, like if you look at the charts, like look at the stock right now, it's like they're like AMC is like three dollars. And if it was like actually like it, 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 like I think it's like I think it should be up at like thirty or even eighty or like I think like it will twenty like easy in a second. So the point is, Moas is going to be this point when everything breaks, and it, the prices will shoot up probably on quite a couple stocks. But no doubt, if Moas happened, it would be with with GameStop and AMC. And the point is, the prices are just completely going to le- le- turn loose. The banks are going to have to use all of their money they have. Because they put these short bets that these companies would go out of business and now they need to buy back as many bets as they placed at any price, any price at all. So they bet 100 shares and they and let's say they had those shares, they bought at $4 and they thought they'd buy them back at two. Now they need to buy them back, even if they're at 400, 4,000, 40,000. So there's no limit. There's no limit to the risk they've set themselves up to. And that's what we realize it's called infinite risk. And they, it's a monopoly. It's a monopoly. They have to sell everything to buy back those shares at any value. And that's why I'm saying these banks, they have so much money that, yeah, that's why we're saying we own the price. That GameStop share could be worth 40,000. And if they still need to buy 10 more, they need to buy 10 at 40, but so does everybody else. So it's going to go 40, 60, 50. Like it's, the, and then they need, they have bet everything. And the thing is they've rigged the system. No one knew, no one knew, no one knew. But they have put, for years, they've always been exposed to this risk. It's just was so secretly hidden. It's Achilles heel. And so now COVID dorky gamers realize, holy crap, that's their Achilles heel we've won and now they're kicking a cricket, but yeah, any price at all, they have to buy back or until their company goes out of business. And these are banks we're talking about that have set themselves up in this position. So, and so, so one, it would be because they have to buy back these, these uh, bets they took. And then two, these companies, one, they bet the companies would go out of business. And so there's kind of years of IOUs. And then also the companies are amazing now. And so also just as a business, of course, its value is going to increase. But then on top of that, so yeah, Moas. So I know a few years ago, Silicon Valley Bank out of Silicon Valley went went out of business, right? And all these founders lost all their money, right? So when a bank- they all got bailed back. No, then they all got yeah. their money back. Yeah, but when a bank goes out of like, if we spoke, folks have spoken, a bank goes out of business, all the people lose their money, unfortunately, right? Like the money just kind of disappears. Yeah, it, I, you know, it all depends. I'm pretty sure that Silicon, all of those companies, I think I heard somewhere they all got their money back. So yay, even though all that like broad happened and risky betting, and even though they like made all these mistakes and lost all this money for the people, the tax money reimbursed everybody because like oh these companies are really important and they're you know too important to fail um but it's because it's because of the and that's apparently what it is it's because that 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 fund with that like no 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 no, it's that zero balance fund yeah so i mean it's just like it's it's all completely rigged do you have to be 18 to buy stocks so yeah do you? Okay. But you can get custodial so like yeah. i have a student i have a student who um i've been teaching him about buying stocks and zero percent do i want him i mean of course i do for the sake of like because I, you know, I love this kid and I want to see him have a great life. Like, I'm not sitting there saying like, buy GameStop, buy AMC. So he did ask me, what are your favorites? I have these two. Um, he actually was thinking about buying Apple and Disney and then like Taiwan, like, you know, computer chips or something. And so then, I, so, so for example, Kelly, how do you teach kids about buying stocks? How do you teach them to? Oh, good question. <laughs> so we looked into, I said, well, let's think about some things. Are, is the CEO selling stocks? And then we looked and recently the Disney CEO was. And so then we said like, hmm, like, do you think, and I said to him, do you think Disney will be worth more in the future? And he was like, yeah. I was like, well, do you think right now they're doing well? Or do you think maybe they're struggling in a bit? And he was like, oh, if their CEO is selling, probably they're struggling. I said, exactly. So th- that's kind of this idea is you try to fortune tell and you guess which way it's going to go. And then you could buy now or you could wait. And so, yeah, we just kind of, and then there was another one we were looking at Nintendo. And we realized the price of Nintendo has basically been the same its entire life. And yet, like, we, we just looked at a number of factors why actually now is just as good of a time as any. If you think that's a good company, go for it. So, we, yeah, it's just like, it's really fun, you know. And he's only nine, but that's, that's, the, the, that's the, like, so cool stuff about all of this is, like, it's so fun to think about. It's fun to predict. It's fun to see if you were right. Like, and, and, and it's just kind of common sense. Like, and, and then the more you learn and the more you learn it, you know, of like, will this business succeed? How and much of risk does people take with the stock market? Like, should somebody, like, invest 30% of their income in the stock market, 10%? 
or just depends on the situation it depends on your situation totally and at the same time you know i think for me though i was like i I think these opportunities are amazing and i really want to go balls to the walls like i want to see what i can do in this lifetime now that i'm kind of understanding this like third generation policy that like by the third generation everyone loses money and like like after living in china seeing how hard everyone's working and stuff like that i was like wait a minute let me turn it up and so um yeah i've you know i've i just think but again i mean the stock market can make you so much money it really can make you money and so you know like learning about it and try but definitely not anything that's going to stress you out you know nothing that's going to stress you out do you think the sense of thing is having too much money yeah definitely a hundred percent and i think that's a huge problem we have right now is like and i even think when you i think there's i think i think possibly even you and i you know we could say we have too much money just because so many times when people have money they don't know what to do with it right like but go shopping you go buy a luxury bag you go like you know whatever whatever it's like it's like i think as a as a society we don't have this much direction on how to focus and use our resources to really be long-term effective and helpful for our community and for, um, you know, for everybody. So are you like positive or negative about the future of financial stuff? Extremely positive. Okay. I think so. I think so. And I but just, why are you positive after you seeing all this negative stuff, so to speak? Cause it can only go up from here. I hope, Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just think if all this stuff is becoming common knowledge and I think there's a lot of things in the world, like I said, I think this decade is going to be defined by the whistleblowers. Because I think there's a lot of industries where people are getting pissed off and sick of what they're seeing, whether it's healthcare, whether, you know, what, the, the education, whatever. And I think, um, yeah, I, I think it's really exciting. Like, there's no way people can know all this stuff and not demand change. And then, of course, change might lead to um, the better. So what's this right here? So this is, like, kind of a cool website. This is Stonko Tracker. Like, someone made it has GameStop, AMC, and it used to have Bed Bath & Beyond before Bed Bath & Beyond disappeared. And it shows here 26.78%. Um, that means DRS. And so what you can do is you could remove stocks from being able to be traded, which is like, like if there's no stocks available, you can't trade them. They're like no more crime can happen because there's none available. And actually in the past, overstock bought all their shares and then they were still trading and they went, what happened? And then then suddenly it actually squeezed. So sorry, sorry, everyone's ears. Um, because the, uh, because they got caught trading shares that didn't exist. And so anyway, this is an idea. Like again, like this whole MOAS thing, this whole proving ourselves right, like there's lots of different ways this could kick off. One way would be if we're able to DRS, which is uh, own the entire float, all the shares available if individuals own them and take them no longer for sale. And so, so far, 26.78% of all shares of GameStop available are locked away. And so if we, you know, if you get that up to 100 you know, but and it's and just who, kind of a fun. And who does this? Like just some guy made it. You know, just some guy made it. And look, they even have dark mode. Yeah. It's a tits up, tits up tracker. I don't know. But oh, oh, uh, yeah, stonk time. I mean, it's just like so many people love this. It's like, it's, you know, it reminds me of like, I really, this reminds me of my childhood and watching my parents love sports, you know, and like that thrill of like a sports team and they're playing and let's see who's going to win and how is that player doing and what's the score? I mean, this is that exact same thing, like game time, 40 hours. And it's like, it's fun. It's community. Uh, it's like, yeah. So let's, let's and, say, let's say like all this stuff we're talking about, right? Let's say you took like a hundred average Americans and gave them some kind of test on all, all this stuff, right? Like, of course, and they're going to grade be zero to 100, right? What do you think, what do you think your grade would be compared to like a hundred average Americans? Like you think you're like a 75, 80% knowledge of this, 95% on, fine, on, on all, all this stuff. On Game all stock, financial literature, on GameStop stuff? No, yeah, all this sports stock stuff, all this stuff we're talking about. Oh, I don't know if you think, what grade you, you know, think it's so. funny. It's funny because like I watch all these YouTubers, right? And a lot of the like the AMC professionals don't, there's so many AMC like, like, like obsessed people that are like Bed Bath & Beyond, you guys lost out. But then there's so many Bed Bath & Beyond people that are like AMC, you guys are screwed. So actually, uh, it's fun being an audience member because I really have this great perspective of like all of these. Anyway, I would say, I would say I have a pretty good awareness of what's going on. Like 75. 75, okay. 7. And, and so how do you get yourself smarter? Like just keep on doing research and studying and... Yeah, just like keep learning. And again, like, I mean, again, it's just like your curiosity. And I think I told you before, I've deleted all my social media except for LinkedIn. And then even when I browse stuff, I purposely just look into these couple topics because... It's just like two birds, one stone. You're entertaining yourself and you're learning. And I just, for me, it's so interesting. And I really like, I just, I, you know, I know it can make money for me. And then I have huge dreams of like what I want to do in my life. I want to, you know, make TV shows and make Wall to the Vault and, you know, make great things. And there's no way I can do it if I don't have money and you know, I'm only getting older. So let's go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
So is there like, like a maybe like a YouTube Academy with all this stuff on it? Like like one central location to learn all this stuff? Or you right. Just, or you have to actually go to each one of these people. And you have to go to each one of these people, and you have to know too. And they're kind of were, but again, they keep getting shut down. Like there was like a no great. There was like a great collection on reddit like the pp show and then it like that, that was shut down and now they talk about it so i mean i like to think my linkedin like i'm really starting to turn my linkedin into like a newspaper of all this kind of stuff because i really am i know exactly who to listen to about the different things like i've, I've really watched a lot of videos and i know who's kind of proven themselves who's like i again i don't know i don't know but yeah like you just but again i would just like pick one and just start kind of learning and then you know if someone's yeah like just see and it's it's absolutely fascinating and I was going to tell you, too, like, you know how you do all those posts all the time? Mm -hmm. Have you thought about doing, like, a LinkedIn newsletter? Oh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe, you know, but I kind of, like, just, like, impulsive and leave it. You, like, the LinkedIn. You know, maybe you're right. Too, yeah. Maybe that's a good point. Yeah. But. That's something to think about. Yeah, yeah. You know, one thing that, like, one of my pet peeves is the fact you have these, like, for example, um, Nancy Pelosi, her husband picks stocks at a better rate than Warren Buffett. Right. Like, like, are you kidding me right now? Right. And, and, then, and it's obviously, like, insider training, but... And then they're like saying that we're the reason, like yeah. retail is the reason. And so that's another thing is that someone said recently, like meme stocks, it's like this like kind of word they came up with so that then nobody questions what's going on with these stocks. They go, oh, that's just the meme stocks. That's just the meme stops. And everyone's like, well, and someone said like, that's kind of propaganda because like, well, if you just say, hey, that's meme stocks, like, okay, cool. But what if you stop calling? What if you say, hey, that's a stock of a company that's actually doing well. Why is it acting like this? And yeah, so... A lot of it's just like, you know. But this seems so illegal, right? It's yeah, like, that's that's like exactly. how this random dude has no knowledge of the stock market picking stocks better than Warren Buffett, you know? Yeah, exactly. And yeah, exactly. And I think like that's kind of the frustrating thing too is I started really talking to people and questioning and talking to financial pro experts and stuff, and then they just like wouldn't listen to me or wouldn't talk to me straight or would say I'm crazy. And so then I'm like, okay, you know, and exactly like exactly Nancy Pelosi and that they, you know they all yeah. say we're doing this, but and then you have all these financial advisors like. Okay, they're fine. They're some of them are certified, but like this, is a, dude, you're a like random dude off the street. Like, how are you gonna advise me on stuff, right? Right, and yeah, like, and it's kind of yeah, ex exactly. Like, it's like basically, you're just repeating what I read off the internet. You're not telling me nothing different. Yeah, and I've been to like all those meetings. You know, I've been to like conferences before with financial advisors and stuff, and like, you know, it is. It's it's, it's everything's a job, you know, and it's really risky. It's really risky to um. Say your own opinion and definitely if you're a financial advisor from an institution you're getting paid based off of you know whatever you um yeah. based off of their, their their ones not your own so talk about some of your dreams yeah like where your, your fantasy is big dream vision so, so to speak yeah so my dreams definitely like just leave behind great content i'm like very realistic you know i'm like i'm gonna die and so what am i leaving behind you know i'm gonna die eventually and so i want to make um like really great kids content helpful content um like a couple of reality tv shows like kind of like fun family friendly reality tv shows i want to make i want to make this great tv show um i want to you know try to just be brave be myself and teach people what i'm learning and just make great content to leave behind that so know, talk more about your reality tv shows you want to do my my real tv yeah well and honestly this is something else like like uh, i could find time for this and get started now but I like someone might steal my idea, but it's okay. We can do a different version of it. I can always think of a different version. Um, and I don't know if I said it before. It's like, my, like, this is actually one of the first ideas I ever had when I said to myself, what would I do if I had a million dollars? Like I said, that's in my Netflix, when I made my Netflix invention, I was like, mm, if I made a million dollars, what would I do? And I came up with this idea to make a show that would be kind of like Project Runway. In the sense you have like, like, like a bunch of contestants, like qualified contestants have this project to create each episode and they'll get voted out at the end. However, the qualified contestants are going to be America's greatest teachers. And their project is a school project and they need to actually get kids on board to build a project. And then and this will be this like kind of show where they're like, today you're doing a science experiment. And then we watch the teachers plan the project, go to the school, bring the project to the school. Or, you know, maybe it's a summer camp thing or you have like, you know, acting kids or whatever. And then the kids talk, you know, build the project. They talk about how was the teacher? Was she mean? Was she nice? Was she fun? And then afterward, we look at how did the project turn out and talk. And then, you know, like each week, da, da, da. And. I think this, um, I think it could be family friendly. Everyone's been to school or chooses. I mean, everyone has an opinion about school and then it will also shine light. Like I said, I want to glamorize education. So it can kind of shine light on the difficulties of being a teacher, the fun things you could try as a teacher, how shitty kids are sometimes or how awesome and funny they are. Like, I think, I think something like that kind of show where it shines light on education teachers and it's this family friendly, um, those kinds of things. So what is your take on education system now? Is it like good thing, bad thing? Should everyone like go to private school? Should everyone homeschool? Like 
I mean, it's a disaster. It's a disaster. It's an absolute disaster right now, the education system. I, I would like to think that at least in some ways, kids are getting street smart, you know, and they're learning to think for themselves. Every, I'm sure every angsty teenager is like, screw college. Um, you know, and then I was working as a substitute teacher uh, when I first moved back to Seattle in some of the best charter schools. And the teachers who were getting promotions were literally having kids copy worksheets off projectors. Like the top performing teachers were teaching kids to cheat and telling the kids, here's the answers. Go take your test for the ninth time and please pass. And so you're like, what? What? And so every kid, of course, they're not trying because any kid with a mind goes, what's going on here? Your phone is 100 times more entertaining. I mean, I think it's all a disaster. And so, again, that's why I don't want my businesses really to be tied to schools, I don't think. I mean, maybe they will. But I think if we can be more of like an out of school, it's on TV and all like a fun kind of because I just think at the moment, school is a total disaster and I don't think anyone's prioritizing it. And I'm like, so, you know, where the where the heck do you begin? But I'm also someone who I moved a million times. Um growing up and I always was just learning through games and songs and TV. And so I think now I've said this before, we're at like a low in American media of content that is like helpful for the world or educational. And so I think that's why I want to create content also that, you know, is educating people and helping. So do you think the education system can be salvaged and like, like restarted, like improved or like this is hundred percent. Okay. What is like once you know you're an adult uh, hole, quit digging, right? And I think like the, like all this, our national debt could be solved, our economy could be solved, like everything could be solved. You know, we just need proper leaders and a plan. And so I'm, you know, it's really easy to get depressed. I said like the other day, I was like, no wonder why people become monks, because like the more you learn, the more you just are like, oh my god, I need to sit on a mountain and breathe, because that's about all I could do, because there's so much like horrible and craziness on earth. But do you think the part at the part- same time? Do you think the pro- part of the problem all that is the fact that you know, as America we're so we're like we're so tunnel based like we're thinking like the next day next month we don't as America mm-hmm. we don't tend to think like two three five years we think, I love that we think like the, the the next quarterly report the next performance review we don't we don't think like long term I love that you issues. said that and I think like maybe I'm somebody who just like grew up in my own bubble where I'm such a long term thinker I'm like insanely long term thinker and so I think I just never was like so aware of how short term our world is and yeah I think it's a huge problem. And that's also why I like Walter the Vault is like Walter stands for we are long term thinkers, W-A-L-T. And that's like from the start, I was like family with them. Like, oh, I read that. Don't say you're family. But I really love them because I'm such a long term thinker. And I think it's like it's the, it's the answer to everything. So, you know. I know I'm like, what are you writing? We long term thinkers. We are long term thinkers. Yeah. 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 So what's your definition of generational wealth? Okay generational wealth that's like it's like kind of like you know like a thing people like to say like it's kind of like a trending trending um you know phrase lately i don't know have you heard people say generation yeah it's kind of like trending like because especially like when the stocks were going crazy a few years ago generation and i would say well first of all again let's revisit that third generation fallacy it's that idea that like if you make money by the time your kids kids have money they lose it all and so i guess generational wealth would be handing on to your future family money that gives them that power to yeah i mean to keep growing you know i don't know it's like building your legacy you know like passing on money and that knowledge you know because yeah like the knowledge money for you know for your family in the future so what are some lessons you learned through your life that you want to make sure your kid learns like the easier kind of way that makes any sense uh okay Let's summarize that real quick. I'm like, I don't know. I guess, oh, I don't know. The first thing that popped in my mind is like, trust your judgment. You know, I think that's what I would tell myself because I'm like, dude, she'll figure it out. But me, I need to figure out how to like not over control her and trust her. And like, I think that's probably a big thing about parenthood is like watching your kids like do crazy stuff and be like, ah, but you know, like sometimes like she'll take a cookie and then take another cookie and then you're like, ah, but then she'll only eat like one bite of that second cookie if you don't pay attention. But if you tell her no, she'll eat that whole, she'll eat the whole entire second cookie just to prove a point. So, you know, you got to trust, 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 trust them, trust yourself. Yeah. And, uh, I guess, I guess the other thing is I was always taught to save, but I never was really taught like fun things to invest in. So it may be cool to, you know, tell people all their options. So is there anything about this? So this subject, like what is the, is this called like GameStop philosophy, short stock philosophy? Like what is all, what's this, this called? Is, I would say this is the retail investor movement. Okay. In some ways, the retail investor, that individual. So is that like the official turn well, forward or something else? There's two types of investors, right? There's institutional investors and there's retail. There's household, you and me. 
right? So there's so the institutions, which is usually what people would buy through, right? You'd send it, you'd go to talk to a financial advisor, you'd go to Fidelity or whatever, and you'd give them your money. The institutes buy for you. And then there's the retail, the individual. And so this is somewhat of like a retail revolution. It's where the individual is learning to think for themselves and not use these financial advisors. And now suddenly it's it's breaking the whole system because like, wait, what? Ah! And yeah. So it's okay. like it is a revolution. It's a it's a it's like an you know, it's like an information revolution and okay. how the financial system works. And okay. individuals now, I think it was set up in the past like a like a casino in the sense that you could never get too rich or you're gonna get beat up out in the back if you get too rich, <laughs> you know, or whatever. Yeah. And so I think well, obviously, now, obviously you're cheating, you know. Yeah. And now exactly we're not cheating and we figured out how to win. And now they're like, oh, and there's too many people to beat up. Hopefully. Here's one for you. This doesn't help. So you, you're pretty, off, you're pretty off all the stuff. Okay. Let's suppose, let's Kinda. take, let's take some random banker. Like let's say if we take the VP of a JP Morgan out of Seattle, right? Uh, and you, and you all two did a debate. Okay. About all this stuff. Okay. How do you think you would do? Uh, oh, you think I mean, you'd be able to hold your own or you think I you'd beat them? Do like so terribly because I'm just like really bad at notes, blah, 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 you know, like like dates. And I think like people could de 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 defeat me in a debate in, debate in a second if they're, you know, using facts and statistics. But using, stuff. We're using facts and stats too, though, right? Yeah, but I just would need them like on me. You know what I mean? I don't know. But so like like in a literal debate right now, probably I wouldn't do well. I'm not a debater really. However, then again, maybe if maybe we not talk a debate, about maybe not a debate, but I mean, like you, like you, two people have a conversation and you're right. just trying to prove your point. Exactly, and I think, I mean, I think, I think there's no denying. I would actually, I think I would definitely win, or like quote unquote win. But I think they have a lot of excuses, and actually, it's true. I went to a financial literacy. I wonder if this like person's watching this person. I went to a financial literacy conference the other day, and they were like, "Why are you here?" Because I was like talking about you know like like GameStop, AMC. How honestly, I think Nvidia is way overvalued, and I think. I don't know. I've heard like rumors that they're, I don't know, they've got things going on and they, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of the opposite of AMC in the sense that they're like, I don't know. There's a lot of companies that I think are the opposite of AMC. Even people are saying like Berkshire Hathaway is kind of being hyper inflated while AMC is being suppressed. And this guy, he's like, what are you doing here? And I said, you know, like, well, I don't, I just want to see what's going on. But at the same time, like, you guys don't want to hear any of this. But if you watch the movie called like The Big Short and it, sh it was like with Christian Bale and all these different people in it and it shows, him talking to bankers right before the 2008 financial crisis. And he's like, I think all the, you know, I'm shorting the housing market, right? He was shorting the housing market. He thought the marking housing market was going to crash. And he put billions and billions of dollar bets into the fact the housing market crashed. And everyone thought he was great. Wait, the housing market, everyone has four houses. Blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly they all got hit because he did that math. It's that same, it's the opposite of that. And so, yeah, like, I mean, yeah. So earlier, I know you said you really got at that reading patterns or seeing patterns. Oh, yeah, yeah. How has it helped you out with all the stuff you're doing? Well, I would say in two ways. I think um, like one, it's like in character, you know, like people's characters, because you really are like listening to people you don't know on YouTube and you're like taking their word or you're listening to their advice and their opinions. And so after a while, you can see like, like, are they being shady, sketchy? Are they talking down to people? Are they making degrading comments? Are they like actually really fun and really consistent and really, you know, so like in one thing, maybe just like character. Uh, then, you know, I would say another thing that's like, so that's a little more vague, specific. How is it extremely helping? Well, one word in the community is tinfoil. And I think it comes from like, you know, like, 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 you know, like drug reference or like, cause you're like smoking tinfoil, you're like smoking something out of tinfoil or whatever. And like, then you're crazy, right? It's like, you must be smoking crack, right? And that what they say. And that was, so, I, so, so, so the point is like, people are like, you must be smoking crack if you look at that and you think blah, blah, blah. Like, for example, I put in there, there's a picture like of like this tinfoil from one of these children's books that Ryan Cohen wrote. And it spells out the word cash with like $15 under it. And it's like spelled out with like teddy bears and like, you know, toys and stuff. And it's like, um did that is that a subliminal message for cash $14 and so people are thinking is each share of Bed Bath & Beyond to be $14 so there's all these little like even when Bed Bath & Beyond put their thing on Times Square you know how people can put like there's like that big Times Square thing there was this like weird and everyone's like am I going crazy like a teddy bear in a window nearby and so all these pictures got put out and there was like this like teddy bear and everyone's like am i going crazy is that a teddy bear in the window and then like it sure as hell was and there's this rumor that that new company teddy teddy holdings is going to be the amazon competitor and then right alongside bye bye baby a little teddy bear shows up but like only for a little bit and so it's kind of all these little things where like you start seeing all these like like lego there's so much rumor blockbuster there's so much rumors tied into this and so it's like it's like Jeff, like, like, like you keep seeing like Jeffrey the giraffe show up in places and butter, like all these like tiny, tiny symbols showing up where you're like, am I going crazy? I don't think so. And so you just kind of kind of see peeing all these like patterns and hints. And the course sort of makes sense of this all at some point. Let's imagine there really is this Amazon competitor coming out. 
They're going to need all their shit together and go, but ma, we exist. And then we're like, what? no. And then like what? It'll have like free. It's a website, you know, like products, like shipping systems. Like, like there's a lot to get into place. And so it seems like they are like you can only hide so much and they're giving little Easter eggs. So it does seem like it is coming out. And so you can find all these hints. Like there's even people that are saying now that you mentioned it, I see it everywhere. And yeah, so you just kind of need to know what you're looking for. And then you start seeing it everywhere. So I know all the people you showed me on YouTube, all guys. Are there any, like, any, right? female, are any female people doing right? this? Right, there's like stuff? no girls into there's this. No people in it. Like, I'll tell you something else about me as a person. Oh, and now I realize it's like kind of lame, but like I was one of those like guys, girls. Like I always got along with the guys growing up, but also like I moved a lot or whatever. And then even in college, um, I was the sweetheart of a fraternity, like Phi Kappa Psi. Live, ever die, number five, Kappa Psi. And I loved them. I loved them. It was so fun. And it was like all international from the North. And like, I just kind of like was like a sister, you know, like I told you, like I always become everyone's like aunt. Like I always like therapist everyone. And so I kind of have always, I, I just realized like, I just kind of like leaned into myself recently where I said, you know what? Like I do, like I always kind of get along while well talking to guys, but also just hanging around. And I realized I'm doing that exact same thing, watching all these guys talk about stocks and just sort of hanging around and listening um and so it's yeah so and so yeah i mean unfortunately I, I guess unfortunately it is mostly guys talking about this stuff there's a couple girls who do come in and i think it'd be really fun i mean it'd be so fun to you know talk talk with more girls about it but it's a it's a very isolating hobby you ever talk about starting your own youtube channel about this you know i did a little but oh, again then everyone writes comments and they're like next time you should respect the viewer more but and i'm like give me a freaking break yeah, you, you know you don't, don't read the comments yeah i know like, don't read the comments. on guys like I'm, you know i'm already gonna try and make my scripted content and at the same time i this stuff is so important but you know yeah well, well you know it all come into place it all fall into place yeah 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 so yeah interesting yeah. um if anything about stuff we haven't covered yet i know we're, i know we're like doing like a thirty thousand view of everything you know i guess i would say what can you expect from bed bath and beyond how about that yeah so here's what i think is going to happen I think so basically what happened is you know here's the thing is like they say like you're not you weren't wrong, you were early. Hmm. And then they say like, well, sometimes being early is wrong. Okay, for Bed Bath & Beyond, there was nothing you could do but be early because now there's no way to buy shares and there hasn't been for like 10 months. It's like you kind of had to get in and now you wait. You're like, like, let's wait. So what I think is going to happen, but you could buy bonds, which again, you need to freaking learn how to do that. I don't know. But I, I know for Bed Bath & Beyond, if you want to be honest, you can buy bonds. GameStop's probably involved in this. I mean, there's still ways to, you know, join in this thing or whatever if you want or whatever. Um. So what I expect is going to happen here, quote unquote, soon, quote unquote, as they say, tomorrow, because like it could be at any moment. They always say Moas is tomorrow. And if it's not tomorrow, it's tomorrow. It's the next tomorrow. Um, I think at any moment it's going to come out this big announcement and they're going to say, guess what? Bed Bath & Beyond isn't going through bankruptcy. Guess what? All this crazy stuff happened with Bed Bath & Beyond and Ryan Cohen, this guy who's kind of standing up for the people, even though he's a billionaire, is about to like expose it all but for the sake of like humanity and then we're gonna find out all this like financial crime happened all these different things all these attempts to bankrupt companies the whole entire public is gonna wake up to this whole idea of purposeful shorting predatory shorting and then on top of that um it seems like they are gonna announce this holding company which is a amazon competitor they're gonna revive all these companies blockbuster toys r us sears rite aid party city uh and bring all these back and excite the millennial parent, the millennial. Oh my God, blockbuster shopping! Like, excite all of us who love these companies. And I think, I think it's gonna wipe away. It's gonna, it's gonna have an amazing, amazing uh, chance here to compete or possibly defeat Amazon. And then on top of that, with with this with this goal of making better customer service, which I truly love, like better quality and better customer service. Um, and then at the same time, for Bed Bath and Beyond, it seems like Bed Bath and Beyond that BBBY ticker was preserved. That ticker now is going to be BBBY standing for Bye Bye Baby. Bed Bath & Beyond is BBB. So now these tickers, these shares that I bought that have been kind of hidden are going to, you know, water is going to be put back onto them. You know, it's like, it's like a, like a, it's like a sun, like a sun powered calculator. It's going to go back in the sun. <gasps> Where have I been? And now all these stocks are going to come back to life that I, I bought at 20 cents. You know, I bought all these stocks at 20 cents. Like I was saying in these books, it's saying $14. So if I bought it for 14 cents another or 20 cents and all at some point, these stocks actually did hold value, much to the bank's dismay. No. And then they're going to owe everybody these stocks. And then it also sounds like they keep saying this, this, these numbers, 741, 741, which again, I know I sound like, no, I'm getting all into this. And you're like, what are you talking about? But they keep hinting that 
you're going to get seven for one. So whether that's for every one GameStop share you have, you're actually getting seven companies or for every one BBBY stock you have, you're getting seven. So everyone's like, what are these seven companies? Is it Blockbuster, Sears? Like, anyway, it's all this, again, it's all this crazy stuff that's going to happen. And so that's where I'd say to you, like, no financial risk, no nothing, whatever, but getting yourself involved in things is the best way to learn about it. So if you're like, what's she talking about? This sounds interesting. I don't know. You could always consider again, like buy one share and get emotionally invested, but you could lose all your money too. You know, I don't know. So like, again, this stuff is like so exciting and interesting and it's how the people make money. It's like how true money is made. And so if, yeah, anyway, just like, again, all that kind of probably sounded crazy, but it's like this epic, crazy stuff is going to, I think, come out of this and then some. So. Yeah. People don't realize like back in the day, Sears, like there wasn't one of the top companies in the world, right? They had like, they, Back in the 30s, people like order stuff out of the catalog. Sears, like right. you could go buy clothes, the, everything. Now it's like, I don't think Sears is in business. No, Sears is gone, right? Right. Well, yeah, exactly. So, it, but it's because it's it being predatory. Yeah. And they it fell these... pretty quickly too. And like, it went like from this, like instantly, right. right? And exactly. And so it seems like this is this, this predatory, these predatory short selling where they, they just make the comp, give the companies bad advice. They said, don't worry, the CEO, we'll keep you safe. We'll keep your family safe. But let's just, let's, let's abandon the ship and then they keep everything valuable. And so, I think they saw this is happening, saw this is happening, saw this is happening, and then they were able to go in and save this company. And now the fact that this one company was finally saved, it's it's like, ah, like their system was so risky that just one being prevented now can blow up the whole game. So you talk about how you love great customer service several times, right? Yeah. Off the top of your head, what's the company like? When you think it's coming like you think instantly great customer service. God, you know. Like they get this. Uh um, I don't know. You know, it's like, it's so hard to think of these days. Where do we have? Oh, I don't know. You know, I guess like, it's just so hard to think of these days. It's like, even now people are getting worse customer service because like COVID, you know, like they can't give out samples and like any, you know, oh my God. like my local grocery store is kind of sweet because like they have well-priced coffee and they give out samples. I mean, I think almost everywhere's gotten bad customer service or I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Really. Honestly, I can't think of many. Yeah, I, I would, I would, I would think Chick Fil A off the top of their head. Oh yeah, maybe. I, I think the only one I think of Chick Fil A. Yeah, you know, it just makes me think of like I remember seeing like those like like on the internet they had like where there's like plastic cubes around them and like work in the like COVID and the rain and yeah. So it's like maybe it's customer service, but are they happy or are they being yeah. robots? I mean, that's true. I know now Chick Fil A like like I had a thing on it like a text. It was really hot. All the workers like standing outside. They always had like their personal air conditioning machines over their head. I thought it was pretty cool, right? right? Yeah. 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 And I'll tell you, for example, like there's the company that I'm teaching on out school and they have like, but even so it used to have really good customer service, but now like it's getting more delayed and the feedback takes a day or two. And so I think, I think in general, people are allowed to get away with bad customer service. Yeah. And, and here's two examples of bad customer service. I think this, okay. happened, I don't know if it's still happening. I think the back was so bad. They stopped it. Like I know Wendy's was doing a thing where like it was called a uh, surge pricing. So like, for so example, I go, I go, I'm the only person in the, in the line, the meal is like, I'm making the numbers of meal is like $10, right? Right. But then I go in, an hour later, there's 20 people in the line. Now my meal is like 20 bucks. Right. So you, I have to pay more to stay in the line longer. Like, how's that fucking make I'm sense? I'm telling you, I think some of this is like being done on purpose to make people think they're going crazy. Like, I really think there's some companies like, like, like Rite Aid, like Rite Aid, I'm telling you, Rite Aid, I think is part of this whole GameStop thing. Like, again, we're in the sense it's been given this bad advice on purpose. But it's, like so, like pharmacy company. Yeah, like, but it's like so in disguise that everyone's like, oh, I don't know what's going on. They have like $12 nail polish. Yeah. Like who in the world is going into a company saying this is smart? And so it's like they do these things like to your like to the naked eye. You're like, well, you think maybe they do it to see. But okay. They're doing it to see like what will make everyone crack. And then, you know, and then we go, was well, it our oh, fault? Or oh, maybe it's like the opposite. Like, okay, I'm paid part $12 for nail polish. Oh, they're actually buying it. Let's increase to $14. Oh, yeah. Increase to yeah, $15. Yeah, yeah. What's the cutoff point, right? Right, right. We're just, exactly. And like, and I think, I think this, Exactly. Like it's all like kind of self-fulfilling, you know, it's like everyone's like cutting costs. It's like, it's like, it's all gotten out of control and unsustainable. And I think it is because this like crash hasn't happened and because these priorities are are out of control. And and I know. think when these, I'm, I'm making this up maybe, but I'm pretty okay. sure like they did that policy for like two weeks then that so much backlash, they backed off. The damage was done, right? Like, yeah. like, like, are you like the damage already, was already done, I think. Yeah. And then you hear what Walmart was doing. I, I, I think they stopped this too, but they had a thing where like, they were, they were going to charge you to use a self checkout. Oh my God. So, like, so you want me to check my groceries out that I don't know, you haven't trained me to do, and you're charged you to do it. Yeah. Instead of like, you know, time is money. Yeah. It's instead, like, what the yeah instead of like maybe hiring a couple more Walmart cashiers, 
And so this is my crazy Walmart story, right? I was visiting my daughter in Dallas a couple years ago. I had to go to Walmart. Of course, there's like two registers open, a lot of people in line. And I was a, I found out it was the person at the cashier doing the groceries, another person. So I was third in line, right? A phone rings, right? And the cashier looks at her phone. I'll be back. I have to take that. And just left. We're like, what the fuck is You're going like, you know on? what? I'm going to leave too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We, like, yeah. I, we left. Yeah. With your stuff, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> right. And it kills me too. Like, you have to. It's exactly. It's just like no one cares anymore. And then even corporate doesn't care. And honestly, I'll say it like, if I, and then my other dreams of freaking generational wealth. So yeah. I honestly kind of am dreaming a little big lately, but I'm deciding like, you know, your life is what you make it. My daughter's daycare, kinder care, it's like, it's like, you look online, it's like they're famous for kind of being a disaster. You know what I mean? Like, like kind of just like the bare minimum, um, but at least it's affordable. You know, our, our location isn't that bad, but the more I'm looking, I'm like, what the heck? Because I have this experience in children, young education, da, da, da. I looked at, I don't know if I told you this, the CEO, the two companies he used to run, now the CEO of Kinder Care, you know, the two companies he used to lead, one, like both for decades, both for a decade, Old Navy and Jack in the Box. Oh, wow. So what, like, like low quality, high, high production, Old Navy or medium quality. And then Jack in the Box, which is like 0% healthy, just convenient and yummy. And now suddenly he's the number one, like, like, like daycare, the number one care provider of children in America is run by the former like head of Old Navy and Jack in the Box. Isn't it funny how the, how the more horrible the food is for your health, the more yummy it is? Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, how in the world is someone like this in charge of the, the most, in charge of the decision making for the, the majority of children in America? So someone like me, now that I'm learning about money, I'm learning about financing, I'm learning about investing, activist investing, which is activist investing is where you go in with a purpose and make a company better. And it's not necessarily the company itself is bad. It's that the leadership is not well intended. So I could see myself going in trying to make a couple billion dollars and then making, you know, kinder care a better company. So next, talk, about the, talk about the concept of money. What I mean by that is like, Eight hundred fifty dollars might be a lot of money to one person, right? And of it's course, not. it's penny change to someone else. I know eight hundred fifty million dollars might be a lot of money to someone, but then right. again, it's really not right. So you're talking about the concept of money, how different people have different attitudes towards money based on economic, economic situations and stuff like that. Yeah, and I think a lot of it's like based off of conditioning, and like you know, you're taught to think like, wow, fifty dollars is so much, but like, look at they've printed like eighty percent more of dollars than ever in existence. So actually, fifty is the new four hundred is the new fifty. You know what I mean? And like, we're all kind of in denial, and we're not being told this all the time while the people in power are being told like, hey, you know, we could so again, it's just this, it's, it's like education. I even asked Chad GPT, I said, what's the one thing we could do to save the world? And uh, like, what's the one thing you can focus on? They said education, you know? And so I think now more than ever in this like, you know, day and age of information wars and you know, like what's true and fake news, it's like, well, it's, it's a little bit only getting worse, but also hopefully getting better. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm loving Gen Z. I feel like they're like so like they don't take any crap and they're like figuring out technology and ways to communicate and like they're just like cutting cutting the crap and so I actually feel really hopeful for the future given um, this like Moas thing the millennials being smart working together and then like you know Gen Z's not taking any of the crap. Do you think what do you think it matters that what political party is like any level given like federal state city actual makes a difference in the economy? Hopefully. It's hopefully. Let's see. <laughs> I mean, I know. And then again, some of my favorite, some of my best friends, um, even like my personal friends were supporting politicians who then their views on finance make perfect sense why they're saying that. But actually it's like not solving anything they're like print more money. Don't hit, you know, don't, don't hit the debt ceiling, like extend the debt ceiling. So it's like, it's like, again, it's like education that even the politicians in charge don't have the best information and they don't even know what they're getting themselves into. So it's all education. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's crazy. So education, I think there's a difference between a good education and a bad education. How do you make sure kids are getting good education versus bad education? Is it like training the teachers correctly or? No, I mean, ugh, give me a break. I think as many people as you can learn from and like, what did, oh yeah, so my student and I, I tutor a kid in entrepreneurship and he's nine years old and he said that his goals are to end all homelessness and hunger. And I'm like, oh, that's gonna, you know, let's try, you know, you have your whole freaking life. I am there with you, but like, we're, this is gonna take some thinking. Yeah. And I found a website called like invisiblepeople.org or whatever. And then they were talking about the history of homelessness in America. And they were saying that actually it started like 130 years after the settling of Europeans. And they, they started making these laws to displace people. And I get like, like I was saying, probably the settlers came and then three generations later, they said, all right, I've had enough of you freaks. 
I've had enough of you annoying people. I've had enough of you bums. Get out. And so then, then the people in power wrote these rules. And then that was the first documented homelessness. And so then we were laughing. We were, you know, we were surprised. And I said, so Julian, what was the cause of homelessness? Laws. So, you know, you can sit here and you can feed people and you can home them and you can do all this stuff. But again, it's like, you know, if you don't get to the root of it, nothing's nothing's really going to change. And So do you think we can, any, any chance you can solve that problem? Oh, oh, wait. Oh, and then going back. To, oh, but anyway, I want to go back to that homelessness thing. Oh, yeah. So I was telling him, oh, so how can we tell? Oh, sorry. So how can we tell kids um, how to like how to be intelligent? And so then I said to Julian, to my student, you can look at him, JulianBusinessman.com. You can, um, you know, his, his mom said that's fine. Um, and he makes music videos, all this amazing stuff. Uh, and I said to Julian, OK, this website right here says that homelessness started because of laws. That's true. But at the same time, who made this website? Who are they? Who did they pay for? Was it taken over by AI? We don't know. I said, so here's one idea. Like, here's maybe one way, maybe here's one reason, but you need to keep studying and keep learning and learn and use your common sense. And then, you know, you'll like, let's see if this keeps, this same fact keeps going up. And it's the same stuff with the, well, the stock stuff too, with when you're looking at the message boards and you don't know who anyone is. They could be a paid bot. They could be a bank in disguise, you know, like, like all these different things. And so you need to kind of just trust yourself. I mean, oh God, it's so, yeah, it's, there's a lot right now, but I think just, trying to learn and learn lots of things. And I don't know, what do you hear? Like become an expert in something and just know you don't need to know everything. I don't know. Good luck, everyone. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anything else you want to cover about this GameStop, Brian Cohen, all this stuff right here? Um, anything else you want to talk about? Know, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll say this. I'll say this. I really think something huge is coming. Um, people always say it's like a once in a lifetime opportunity. Uh, I just don't think that's the case. I don't think anything needs to be a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I think when we get that mindset, you actually end up chasing things. Like the first time I ever bought GameStop was at $140. Nope, that was the second time because I'd originally bought it at $4. And then I was like, who cares? And then finally, I got excited after it gone so crazy. And then it's up at $140. And then actually, you know, those shares I'm down on. And because I was chasing this opportunity. I was like, oh my God. Like I'd been seeing it. I'd been seeing it. I'd been seeing it. I'd seen it. And then finally up here, I want to buy it. And then so... In some ways, that's what I would like to say to people is like, let's say this is interesting you. And let's say you're like, oh, maybe I'll buy a share. And then let's say tomorrow or whatever, it's like things start kicking off. The price is like, boom, 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 boom. Okay. If you put money in, cool. If you don't put money in, also cool. Because it's just your kind of opportunity. It's like that push to start learning more and then learn more and then learn more. And then you can always, like that's what I always say, never chase anything, never chase anything, never FOMO into everything because there'll always be new opportunities and there'll always be things you can get into, get excited about, really learn. And so I just think anything you're like, oh, I have to hurry. Like it, that, that that could go well, but also you, it really could go wrong. And it's not at all kind of, it's not done with any sort of you know plan. So I think just take your time and trust that let's say this all does take off. You can watch it and more is going to happen. If this happens and we're right, like, 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 you know, that, that, that's that meme of I'm the captain now, you know, that yeah. movie, like we're the captain now. I'm the captain now because it turns out we've hacked this. We figured it out. We've kind of reworked the financial system. We've shined lights on this corruption and now we know what's going on. So we're going to tell you what's going on. And so I think it can kind of be this revolution where we can all learn together. And, you know. So you said that y'all hacked, hacked the system, but what percentage of people think have actually hacked the system? Like how many people think have hacked it? And what percentage of actually like going along with the old, the old ways of doing things? I would say like, I <laughs> You need to look like how many people are in AMC and GameStop investors. Take all those people. About like maybe one percent, two percent of population of the of the stock market investing population, um, would be so. Yeah, actually, so I think there's something like ninety percent of the stock market is owned by like one percent of people, mm -hmm. and so that's also why this is like because oh, like ninety percent of the stock market is betting against these companies, yeah. and yet there's millions and millions and millions of individual fish now becoming yeah. this epic fish that's actually probably going to eat many sharks all in one bite yeah I thought, what's that company called blackrock that blackrock actually they own yeah, everything owns everything yeah you see that video i posted on linkedin yeah. there's like the girl yeah, yeah yeah like exactly and that's the kind of stuff that's like so excited it's like exactly it's that balance of like it's heartbreaking because you're like what the f like every movie premise was on reality yeah and like so many ways and you're like what the f like that like what uh but at the same time it's like Okay, if I'm saying it, you're saying it, you're saying it. like all these Boeing people, it's like hundreds of people coming out. Like at some point, the the the, the dam's broken, all the, of, the jig's them, up. All of them can be lying. Exactly. So I think we're in for a little bit of chaos here. Like, you know, like, like, cause like nobody knows who to turn to. No one knows who to trust. Blah, 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 but uh, yeah, I think maybe 20, 30 years ago, everyone, the philosophy was okay. If you're in a position of power of government, whatever, if you're a position of power, you know you're doing, we trust you. Now it's like, 
dude you know, no yeah we don't trust you because we see we can be doing i mean like they look at the people and you're like yeah. like yeah you know, like back in the day there's a guy named walter cronkite in the news right mm. if walter cronkite said the moon was made to achieve people would believe him right because he's so trustworthy right mm -hmm. now you know cnn they're called clown news network you know Dude, and that's things. I'm like getting confused. Like no one trusts the media. No one trusts the people in power no more. Okay, and this is what I'm saying. I love Gen Z. It's like apparently Gen Z, like, and again, I like, I don't know, like apparently, again, this is like a really controversial thing to say, and it's like out of nowhere. But apparently, Gen Z, like, 100 percent doesn't believe that 9/11 was real, and they're like 100 percent like proven up, down, left, and right. And so I think like that's kind of the stuff about like they think it was planned. And so that's kind of that stuff about like Gen Z and BlackRock and all this stuff, and even me like. I'm scared to talk about it at first until the more they realize lots of people are talking about this and they're still alive. So you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. I really think this decade is going to be defined by whistleblowers because there's the point that no one can carry on acting like everything's fine yeah. when we all know this stuff. And so now it is, what are we going to do with all this information? Yeah, I know several people too who like believe 911 was like an inside job and stuff. And if you listen to them, are like, oh, so that makes sense, right? Oh, it's like all the money. It's like you look at all the money and yeah. they like shorted. They even shorted yeah. the like buildings and like yeah. all the insurance. My stuff. thing and is like, like first, I believe it actually happened, but then my thing is like all the skyjackers were from Saudi Arabia, mm. but we invaded Iraq, right? Mm. Like, I don't it makes know. no sense. You know, right? I'm like, oh my God, yeah. Yeah. I guess, so, yeah, my thing is like, I'm just like, dang, you know, you're just finding all these people kind of speaking up and questioning things that like, We'd always assumed were true in the past, and now people are getting more information. And everyone's have their little expert and things yeah. and things. And then scientifically, there's no way for the tower to implode from inside based on the steel. And okay, the... and then they were saying like there's no like remains of a. Yeah. And then they showed this clip from like back in the day, like day two, and they're like, guess what? We found a month the rebel the passport of the hijacker. So it turns out it was him. Like that's the way they were able to figure out who it was because they found a passport yeah. one block away. Yeah. And so you start realizing like, wait a minute, what? And so again, that's where I'm excited for like humanity in the sense that at least we're all like realizing what's going on, and there's no way that can't be better yeah. as a whole. I, so I would with think. stuff like that, is it better to stay ignorant or new? No. So let me ask you this. So like you know, go back to the day right where you know. Maybe it is if you're like president, oh, so. President JFK got assassinated six days, right? Right. They think the Gali Harvey also did it. Let's suppose it came out that actually the CIA killed him, right? And that came out like in 2027. Like, how do you think the country would react? Right? We're like, oh man, we got rid of the CIA. Everything's a lie. You know, I recently had. This like, do we do we really want to know the truth? Yeah, because you no, know, I recently had this kind of experience with like um a consultant, and I didn't. You know, like have a good experience, and then I realized, like, well, I'm not really sure how that went, and I could either ignore it, or it's like, again, it's like, it's like, it's like, if all this like ignorance is bliss, but at the same time, it's only going to get worse. You know, and that's actually okay. Let's let's little forget all this stuff I said. Let's think about this thing. People always say, don't talk about money, don't talk about politics, don't talk about religion. Well, then what happens? Like they get more and more divided, yeah. more and more yeah. secretive. So I think. I mean, all this stuff is not fun to hear, and a lot of people don't want to hear and don't have the patience. But at the same time, this is how like change will happen. So it's like, yeah. it's going to here, you know. I think one bad thing about a country now is like you have like the one percent of the far left liberals. I think, if, I, in my personal life, if you took, if you somehow took out the four, four percent of one percent liberals and take out the four percent one percent conservatives, the country is so much better. Because those two get all the attention, yeah, and good stuff. And here in the middle, like, what are y'all doing, right? Like. Most Democrats I know don't agree with the far left liberals. Most of yeah. them I know don't agree with the fucking it's performance. Stuff, and it's yeah. a distraction performance. It's though. a lot of performance stuff, yeah. It's a distraction performance to keep everyone, you know, it's again, it's that they like the, the ants in the can, you know, the analogy of the ants in the can, and then they sh like everyone's in the can, and then they kick the can, and then everyone fights amongst each other. But who's the one kicking the can, you know? Yeah. So this is one thing, too. Like, I would never want to be president. This is one mm -hmm. thing I do want to do, right? Like, let's suppose, like, let's fast forward to your 2032, right? And we're okay. saying, Tom Brown is elected president. Okay. Inauguration, he's sworn in, and he gets his briefing. I want to be there for the briefing. Like when they say, hey, Mr. President, you want to do this? You can't because of this. You know, here's, you know, Alien 123, he gives us all the Bitcoin, right? Like, what does that president, what's that briefing, right? The president gets you. Like, he actually learns all the stuff that goes on, like all the dangers, all the, all the bad stuff. You know, hey, there's, an asteroid coming in my hit us. Oh, yeah, like the recap, like the 101. Yeah. Welcome to the sea. Yeah, welcome to this. And like, you know, let's like, I know you can't on this, but if you did this, this affects this. You know, I would love to have, like that briefing, right? Yeah. It'd probably fucking blow my mind away. Like, right. I'd probably become but like Eric 51. Yeah, what's I'm, really yeah, going yeah, on? Yeah, I'd probably become a monk because I have too much information. You know, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Can you imagine that 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 briefing he gets? Like, I all know. these like the Department of Defense, the climate people, environment, you know, like, hey, Mr. President, um, well, I know we said we have enough oil for 100 years, really, or for two yeah. years. Or, hey, 
or, you know, uh, I know we say in the news, North Korea can't attack us while they have 20 bombs. They guess no, in two seconds. We're and we're, and we're, yeah. Like that, how fucking, I yeah. guess it has, it has to be a fucking scary ass briefing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and then again, I just like, uh, God, then again, you know, it's like, well, you don't want to worry people, but again, yeah. our origins, like of our, you know, it's, it's so funny. I've gone, I've gone through this, like, kind of like a American awakening where like, after I went to China, I came back and I was like, I hate America. And now I realize like, no, like we have like a really great land, you yeah. know, like, like we have like a lot of potential, like, come on, America. And we're going to come to be, I know we get shit on all the time, but you know, like as far as agriculture, land, you know, we, diversity, people, like, no. Like people always talk about lack of diversity, here, but freedom ish. Oh, go to it, it is. But but you go to Japan, dude. That's what I was thinking too. Like I met, I meet people overseas all the time, Japan, and we Germany. always like shame ourselves for being racist. But like go to any country, they're like surrounded by only locals, and they're right. Like yeah. everyone's right. Like everyone's, and I'm not. I'm not like I'm just saying. Like by the way, racism is like part of cultures mm. because like they don't have as much. So we are very diverse in America. You see people from all different countries all the time, and I remember meeting like people overseas that were like, oh, I'd never even met anyone that wasn't from my town. Yeah. And so that's like you know, oh, we're just more exposed to racism because we're seeing more people. Here's a question for you. So you're you're President Kelly Kirk of the United States. All right. And you have your, like your daily brief or whatever. Sure. And they come in and say, hey, Mr. President. I would do it. This, okay, wait. They say, Mrs. President, there's always tell you this, but um, there's an asteroid coming and it's going to be here in three months. Mm -hmm. It's going to it's gonna destroy our life in three months. Yeah. Do you tell everyone? Do you like let everyone just live their life? And, and they say when it comes, it's like, It'll be in the sky within a second. Everyone will be dead. Like, there's no, like, yeah. It's like, it's I'll in death. It. Like, if you, I was the president, I would tell everyone. So, you know, no living in bliss, live your life. You just tell them. And with the risk, I would talk with a lot of people, figure out how to tell them, and then tell people. But isn't yeah. a risk like people losing their mind, looting? That's, that's going to happen anyway. But not for the, like, so the asteroid hits is instant death. Like, there's no. I know. Exactly. Everyone's already dying. So, if everyone's going crazy, you know, the, I think at first people would freak out and then they'd go, oh my God, I'm so glad you told me. Let me live these, like, final months. Mm -hmm. What's to lose? And then I'd say, guess what? And food's free and everyone can stay that and pools are free and live a little because like we're all going down. And that's where you say, hey, uh, my, my alien friend here is going to take me to this planet. Peace out, Earth. That's that movie. <laughs> don't, don't look down. Yeah, that was that movie that came out. And that's like that yeah. was the premise. But I think, you know, I mean, if, if everything's if everything's blowing up anyway, I'd say, hey, yeah, okay. food's free, live a little. And, you know, at that point, it's over. Yeah. You can't teach anyone anything else. You can't do anything. Hardly. I mean, I guess you could. But. Yeah. Mostly people are going to do what they want to do. Their yeah. final three months. And I think that'd be nice to tell I'd them. I'd be interested to know if like, that did happen. Like, will people get more religious? Or are they like, okay. God, into everything. You know do, what I mean? Or do you think they'd be like, okay, obviously God is not real if he's going to, if we're going to kill him in three months. I think you just lean into more of whatever you want. What like, do you want? Like, you, exactly. You, you, like, you, like, what would you do if I said, if I said, I promise you. No, I don't even promise you. If it was just a known fact in three months, like, what would you do? Drop everything and, you know, yeah. blah, blah, Yeah. Yeah, I would drop everything, be around my loved ones and say like, okay. Like, I no point to wall to the vault anymore. Yeah. No point to stocks anymore. Yeah. If this is the scenario, no. Yeah. yeah. Food's free for everyone. I'm the president. Yeah. Guys, guess what? Like, I'm not going to be the president anymore. Yeah, I would like, just talk dude, it out, think it out. Dude, Within a week, I'm done. Like, dude, I'm not paying my mortgage no more. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. And no one would need to. I'd say mortgages yeah. are done. Yeah. All the food's free. Please pick up your trash, but also who the F cares? Let's be real, because it's all about to explode. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a totally different. I, would, I wouldn't act like that in any other yeah. situation. Yeah. But I would talk to a lot of people. Uh, you know, I'd reason like, okay, what's the best way to handle this? But I think pretty much for the most part, have anything you want. Yeah. And we're screwed. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, who knows what kind of stuff goes on? Or what? Build a spaceship really quick, everyone. Yeah. Freeze yourself. I don't. Yeah. Anyone ever wants to try anything? Let's do that like, really quick. Like, damn it, Elon. You, you, <laughs> yeah, you, like, let's you, you took too long to get us to Mars. I love this. I love this. This is someone I was talking with recently, and it turns out I'm a huge fan of globalism which I grew up my whole life thinking globalism was like, um, what's that called? Gentrification. Mm -hmm. Like where it's like kind of a wipe of teach everyone, you know, this exact same thing. Turns out globalism actually just means everyone works together and to be like a really efficient country, a really efficient planet. And I'm like, yeah. So it turns out I love globalism. So, but at that point, if there's literally the whole globe is about to explode, globalist, everyone just have a good three months. Yeah. But if we're not exploding, let's be, let's work as a globe. Is there something on your bucket list you haven't done yet? make that TV show, have Mo ass. No, I mean, I think at this point, like I've had my daughter. I love my life. I love my work. I'm slow and steady building all my goals. I just feel like it's trending up. Like, I feel like everything's trending up and I have nothing complained about. And, you know, as long as I can keep good habits, like again, like, you know, like, like the, my biggest struggles now would be like, keep eating healthy, work, you know, take care of yourself because um, I'm really trying to put myself into it. Do you have a timeline for these goals? Like, like post, like in five years, nothing's get done yet. Is like, it's like you have like a, a lot, I mean, a lot of it kind of depends on each other. 
at the same time, stuff could take off before itself. But like, you know, if all of a sudden this does happen and I suddenly get surged with like multi-million dollars, that's going to change things a bit. But I'm kind of acting like it won't. So no, no, because I just feel like uh, things are just going so great. Um, Things are just like, you know, like, again, like, like we still aren't really making any money. We still, you know, look at Wolf of the Wall. You're like, what the heck? But behind the scenes, like, I know everything's going right on plan and it's like really turning into what it's going to be. So. So yeah, what's yeah. your plan to get customers? Like you have like a, a go to market plan or anything like that? Uh, Well, for teaching classes, we already have a whole customer base. And then again, like I think I want to make this like animated series. And I think it's going to be this like effortless. If I can make it look good, it's going to be the most effortless thing to sell, <laughs> which is so cocky. And yeah, right. Like welcome for reality. You're going to get a slap in the face for reality. But like, I think I can sell these episodes to hotels, cruise ship, like anywhere that's like money is being spent aka everywhere and like like parents could go like wow on my flight to hawaii my kids learned about budgeting you know like if i can make ep amazing episodes that also teach like budgeting on your flight to a holiday parents are gonna brag that on their alaska airlines flight their kid learned about budgeting. so anyway i yeah i want my customers to be businesses people like like i like t you know i want to provide jobs for teachers like i want to like kind of you know serve a lot of people so tell us again who your perfect customer is, so to speak. Oh my God. It's, no, I'm telling you, like, I would love, like, again, like, I want, like, I want teachers to love me. I want teachers to be like, hell yeah, this is the best part time who's job. Gonna, who's actually going to pay for your product? Though? Is it teachers? Parents, parents and then businesses. Like, like, again, I don't want to take too much money from individuals, though. Okay. So I think if we could find companies, like, you know, Mini Cooper worked with me once uh, and they're working with us again, uh, these kind of lifestyle brands that want to kind of be, you know, an experience. And, and have you, like, locked down or figured out your pricing model? No, no, no. Okay. But I have also, you know, all this GameStop stuff thing too is video games. It's educational. It's financial education. I've been like, I added like all, anyone who would add me tied to this. Like, like some of the people from, you know, Bye Bye Baby, Bed Bath & Beyond are, and my like friends on LinkedIn. Like I'm trying to plant the seeds that like, hopefully we really like, hopefully game, like GameStop or Teddy will be some of my customers and they're buying products for me in the future. And, you know, like YouTube and yeah, I like, I kind of like, I want, you know, the sky's the limit, but I, I definitely don't want to like, uh, predatory on parents and, okay. and this other thing i think scholarships can pay for me as well when i get standards and stuff okay. so yeah so as far as the future coming like do you see like this being like a franchise model or mm, i think it's gonna be just like a brand brand okay. like a brand with like a show music okay. classes and then again i'll make my other show and i think uh, you yeah. said like maybe doing some like uh, like what's that show called like on tv like, like blues clues shows or, blues, I know, like or that. yeah i would say i would say a lot more like schoolhouse rock is okay. really gonna be the okay. goal yeah let's go to schoolhouse exactly rock. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. schoolhouse rock and then again i grew up like on video games like like these dorky like jump out jump jump start first grade jump start second grade you know like all these games where they're like these kind of fun rpg you're like you're like learning along the way and it's kind of supplementary to school and so i think also i want us to bring me making these like educational games music just kind of media it's like it's like two for one media that like is entertaining you and you're learning at the same time and i said it earlier one of your goals is to make great content. one of your one of your goals are like make great, great content like define great content what does that mean to you? exactly it's valuable it's like it's like worth your time because not only is it a song but also the lyrics are like life lessons and it sounds good and there's like like i have like the song like like one cents a penny, five cents a nickel, ten cents a dime, and a quarter twenty-five. And then it's like, see the coins in order, penny, nickel, dime, and quarter. Like, hello. That's a really, really, really useful song. You're learning one cent a penny, you know, like you're learning like the qualities, you're learning like the in order. Like, like that's a that's great. I mean, I'm sorry, that's a great freaking song. I wrote another song, put it to the test, like put it to the test. Are you about to invest? Will it be worth more in the future? So if I can just match the music to these lyrics, like, are you kidding? If you're walking around the whole restaurant, if you're learning this song as a kid, you're learning about investing, you're learning about credit cards, you're learning about all this stuff as a kid. Oh my God. I was learning like Puff the Magic Dragon, you know, like, like I learned like, like happiness, like, like a song about a unicorn. Like none of that stuff was helping me. The, the 50 Nifty United States song that helped me. I forgot about Puff the Magic Dragon. You're just learning a bunch of bullshit as a kid. And so if you can replace it with these, these this useful stuff, then you're going to be set, you know, like at least making a little bit better choices. I'm guessing plan later on is like translate to different languages. Totally. Money's universal. And so with school, I mean, my TV show can go to other countries. I'm like, yeah, I, I just want to like, you know, I think my frustration with what I saw in the education system and then how epic and fun and immersive education is overseas. I'm like, OK, I want to make that here. Let's make it with financial literacy. But also originally I wanted to kind of shine light on the school experience because you see it's a total disaster. And and I think look at fashion. It's so glamorized and look at sports. It's so glamorized. Why couldn't we do that same towards education? Because education is so powerful. 
you know, if people were, you know, it's like, it's like get the people distracted with fashion, get the people distracted with music, get the people, but you know, but not all music. So, you know, but you know, I'm here to like be brave, be fight. And I have, I have the ability to do it. You know, I'm. So I know you're hiring teachers now. Are there any like non-teacher positions, you're, you're, any, any non-teacher position you're hiring for like graphic designers or software developers or marketing people you're yeah. hiring for? Exactly. I mean, I'm right now, well, I'm kind of on the lookout for illustrators and artists. I want to take a different approach for my social media. I've never, ever, ever been like when I'm in it. Like, you know, everyone's like, ew, I, blah, blah. me too. But I think maybe I'm going to try and treat my social media platforms like an art museum and start putting more art out. Again, I kind of, I don't know, like there's so many things I'm doing that like, I could always use help. Like, you know, we're working on books, games, website, but you know, I, I'm not afraid to ask for help when I need it. But I think right now I mostly want a musician, illustrator, but I, again, if people want to help with social marketing, anything, anything, anything you want, if it sounds like I'm doing something you want to help out well with, you can offer it and we'll see. But yeah, it's, it's pretty, you know, right. bootstrap. And for people to reach out to the main ways on your website and your uh, LinkedIn profile. Yeah, right? don't, yeah, LinkedIn would be the best way. Um, Our website is like such, it's like our website is like a blast from the past. It's like from the 90s, well to the vault .com. It doesn't have any working videos, links, but we'll have a new website soon. You can't even find me on there. Uh, So yeah, LinkedIn is going to be the best. And way do you have a YouTube channel yet? Well, I have a YouTube channel, but um, I just have like two videos on okay, it. So LinkedIn is the main way? Yeah, I really did. I mean, I did. I cut. I cut almost all distractions. So do, you, so, do you prefer LinkedIn for people reach out to, like your business email? Yeah, LinkedIn's fine. LinkedIn's fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. And my contacts also on JulianBusinessman dot coms about me. Okay. But the but but I get a lot of spam emails too. So you know, we'll yeah. let people do the digging, and that'll save me at least one or two spam. Nice. Hey, um, Kel, is there anything else you want to talk about, or anything else that I asked you that we didn't talk about? Um, no. How about you? Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm really, really, really glad. Um, thanks for like having me back on. It's fun to talk about all this stuff, and you know, we'll see what happens. And yeah, you know, thanks. So, again. so any predictions next year, six months about GameStop? Like, yeah, I mean, I think at some point, uh, these will be revealed. The value will finally be unignorable for these companies, and then the prices will match. And um. Everyone's gonna go like what? You know, like a lot of people are like what? And like oh, and then it's really gonna be like a Bitcoin situation. Here's another question for you: Like, so like before we talk about generation, like Boomers, Generation X, Generation Z, all the different generations. Do you think one generation is more open, like all this GameStop stuff? I'm I'm, I'm presuming that Boomers are like you know have no idea what's going on. They're totally against it, you know. There's or Generation Z like more like open, like okay, let's rock the system. So they're fresh, they're fresh, and like yeah, exactly. We're, that's the age, right? This is the age, and I think the Millennials are like, what the heck? We've had so many once in a lifetime horrible events oh, yeah, happen a hundred times yeah. in a lifetime. And the other thing that I'm seeing is apparently like, and again, I think there's plenty of Boomers that are really excited about this movement because they're like, ah, oh, I've been saying this for decades. That's so again, I think there's a reason like like this is staying strong. Uh, but definitely I've heard something about how like, you know, MSNBC or NBC or like all this stuff, like the like boomers way of, of um sort of, you know, brainwashing and suggesting um financial investments and financial advice is starting. It doesn't work on Gen Z. Mm -hmm. You know, like they even have like the, the anti-Kramer ETFs where you can whatever Kramer says, it does the opposite. Yeah. And it actually like always and Nancy Pelosi. So it's like it's like, like, again, meme stocks, you know, like, like literally these stocks, people were talking about using memes because the algorithms were able to track the sentiment and use it against us. So, but the algorithms weren't started, smart enough to understand memes, sarcasm pictures. And so people started communicating through memes. And now even like you saw that BlackRock where the girl's like, oh, I'm a banana. I'm going to lick everything. And then suddenly she's like, okay, I have a second. And then she's actually revealing. I mean, that's why I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I freaking love Gen Z. And I love, I love what we're doing. And I love this like bravery because like, live a good life and like like i said like i grew up on like there was like a you know i read this like the book of virtues every night before bed and like one of the stories like the little girl stuck her finger in the hole in the wall so that the well didn't you know so that the dam didn't flood the whole city you know and then eventually so you know it's like it's like anyway i just feel like what the heck is going on you know what i mean like like really i'm turning into the problem here because i'm figuring out that everything's like a pro you know everything else is the problem so it's like uh, you know it just it's just kind of like i feel like the crazy person and yet i'm just trying to like live in a world where the stock market is what it says it is and so you know if that means that i'm this like rebellious loud crazy person just for like wait what like for like asking questions i guess that's what i'll keep doing because like i said you know i'd rather try and help with the you know i don't i don't want to just pretend like i don't see 
problems. But also, I don't know. Again, I'm not an expert. I don't know what I'm doing. So you have to be careful how much you're yelling when you don't know what you're talking about. But it comes to a point. You're like, okay, I know enough to know. Like, what's going on? And isn't millennial, aren't they the first generation that has not done as good or better than the previous generation? Yeah, like, exactly. Like, we're the first one in America that, like, like we have less kind of income. Life, yeah. And I turned Less to... income, more debt. And that actually, it's funny. Like, I just feel like after we live overseas, especially, like, I lived in China, it's like I learned about their depression, why that happened, you know, like, and, like, all, like, in their generation. So, now they're actually, like, they'd had that where, like, 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 everyone was doing better, everyone was doing better, and then everyone started doing it worse, and they had a depression, and then now slowly every generation is doing better. Um... And so exactly, I think we're kind of here and now it's like, ah, uh, but I also, yeah, no, realistically, yeah, I think we're going to be like this. I was going to say, but I think Gen Z is smart, but no, not the majority. I mean, not, not the majority. The thing is, there's just not enough jobs. And this is the other thing too. All these jobs are being pulled by consultants to cut, you know, cut jobs and cut people. And cut, no, it's like, it's like, it's like a free for all. It's like a free for all fall right now. And I don't even know what people are supposed to do. I know previously the American dream was own a home. I think that's gone. Right. You have come to like, like BlackRock again. BlackRock, the big private investment, like buying like hundreds, thousands of homes. Right. To rent them out, you know. Right. I, I got an email once a day from some random company. We want to buy your home. You wow. Know? Like, you see all these ads, you know. Don't sell your home somewhere local. Sell it to us, you know. Better price, all that kind of stuff, you know. So again, it just makes me think of like when I learned about, you know, what's that called? The Great Leap Forward or whatever overseas God. And I'm telling you, it's like, it's like, oh. The moment you start like saying any sort of like under I'm understanding this stuff, you're like, ah, like, am I even allowed to say this? But it is like, you know, it's like I learned about in China, like the Great Leap Forward is they came up with this idea to like gather everyone's metallic items from their home and sell them to make great cash. And then they'd, they'd burn those down and turn them into tools or weapons or whatever. And then suddenly everyone's selling their ovens, their refrigerators and everything to make money really quickly. But then they have no oven, no refrigerator, and suddenly they can't make food. And so that's exactly the same kind of thing. It's like the short term reward. But in the long term, like, oh, good, you know, you made this, like, great money now, but yeah. now you're screwed with this situation you put yourself into. And I saw this on somewhere earlier. like With, with selling your house quickly or whatever. Yeah, I saw some TV earlier, like, somewhere, or like, if, if an appliance was made in the 1990s, it's, like, it's, like, it's still running now, right? Yeah. An appliance made now is, like, five years is fucking broke. Exactly. And that's where, also, I think this retail revolution, this customer delight, this quality service, this comp competition against Amazon, they're going to be able to win. Like, you see this chance. Because of this situation we're in, we're like, what the heck? Everything's breaking. Nothing's quality. Everything's more expensive. You're paying like a water fee. You know, like for drinking water. You know, it's like all this stuff. So I think there's room for change and improvement. Exactly. And if things can yeah. last again. And have like, you have you seen this for the federal government? Like, they're, 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 so they want to do where dishwashers use less water, right? right? But in reality, you actually use more water because instead of do, doing one load of dishes, now you have to run right, right, two right. or three loads. Yeah, and it's like, look, and, it's and like, also, what you're doing. Yeah. Also, with the dishwasher before, you could put the dish in the dishwasher. And we're clean now. Now you got to take the water from the sink, rinse everything off. Right. So it's just wasting water. I saw this like kids' toy yesterday, and it like you know, it, like had like it was like a kitchen, and it had the section for recycling in it. And I just kind of like want to go to that company and be like, why do you guys have this recycling section here? Hmm, cool. Oh, it's because you believe in recycling. Cool. Like, oh wow, you really believe. Wow. Like, what do you guys? Are you putting your money where your mouth is? Are you practicing what you preach? Let's look at your business. Or are you guys actually just making money? selling toys to kids that encourage them to recycle and encourage them to respect the environment while you're doing none of it and you're making money off of this message. So that's like, you know, that's what everyone's sick of. Like, like, you know, people like say one said, thing and do the other. Like you said like before, that's performative stuff, right? Yeah, they exactly. Exactly. So that the jig's up. The jig's up, dude. Jig's up left, right, everywhere, everywhere. And uh, I think it's exciting again in this time of AI and everything's easy to fake. In the sense that also, if you are trying your best and you let people know, like, I'm here to do well and do a good job, you know, I think it kind of gives you some sort of advantage in the sense of just authenticity is so rare now. So how much do you trust AI? Uh, definitely, I would view it like HR. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they're not on your side yeah. 100%, but... Can you say that again? HR's not on your side. Uh, HR is for the business. They're the yeah. yeah, they're the businesses. So many people think HR is for the employee, but it's not. Exactly. So I would say AI. I'm really. I love like like I was showing you. Like it can be insanely helpful, but um, it's not your friend. Do you think there's any job AI will not be able to do? Mm, well, let me think about it, okay. and I'll tell you next okay. time I'm on the podcast. Here's a question for you. I've asked other people just on the podcast. So let's pay, let's suppose you're having surgery, right? Like heart surgery. Would, pay would you rather have a doctor or AI? Yeah. I guess AI, right? Yeah. Robot. So, but not at this day and age, yeah. I guess. I don't know. Actually, I don't know. Yeah. But do you know that I read something like 60% of like breast 
uh, breast cancer was like misdiagnosed. Yeah, and A, I got it right. Yeah. And or, or or it's like doctors were saying you have breast cancer, you don't actually, and then people are getting their breasts removed, mm -hmm. and like it turns out like sixty yeah. percent weren't. So I'm like, what in the world? So this one so guy is the AI actually yeah. lying to? So this one guy asked a question. He said, I won't have a, I won't have surgery, right? I don't trust AI yet. Mm -hmm. I said, this makes it more complicated. What if your doctor? What do you find out? Your doctor was finished last in his class and had like two or three uh, malpractice suits. Right. Oh, AI then, right? So I heard the Department of like New York Health talk about AI once and he is like saying like he came and spoke at like Microsoft or something and I went to a speech and he was saying that they're starting to use AI with doctors because doctors have like only actually like a 40% yeah. accuracy rate and now the AI is bringing up an extra 30%. So actually they're hitting now with the help of AI like 70% accurate rate. So, here's so a, I love that. Here's, so, a scary, here's a scary stat. I guess, uh -oh. Supposedly of all the murders committed in the United States, only 50% are solved. Like 50% of murders go unsolved. Which means Except were they even correctly solved? That's the yeah, damn good point. Or were they just like that guy? Yeah, damn good point. Yeah. So that's, again, to me, that's fucking scary. I'm just saying. I mean, at any moment, it's all, they could find a reason. It's not a lie, right? At any moment, they could find a reason to mm -hmm. lock you forever and then call you the crazy one. So that's like that guy. What's his name or whatever? And then he said like, you know, like he said like I'm happy and like remember the guy like Edward Norton or whatever oh. or like whatever his name is and he was like always in like the pen foil and he was the one that made like Norton antivirus but actually yeah. like then he was like actually because everything's tracking you and then he said like I never ever commit suicide and then like one day he, <laughs> and then he just suddenly had and yeah then like did he so you know that's how you feel. There's just a lot of insane crazy stuff going on in the world right now. Yeah, and I think again it's that conversation too. And oh, and that's like this guy. There's like one of my favorite people, like Ian Carroll. And he's kind of always like getting to the bottom of things. And he said like now he's trying to collect from everyone around the world. He's like, wait a minute. Can everyone tell me the names of your um, publishers, of your textbook publishers from when you were in school? I want to see who's making all the textbooks. Right. And so at the same time, as much as everything's crazy in the world, well, where's it coming from? And so kind of like Damn. looking at the root of who's supplying these textbooks, yeah. who's that voice and who are these people educating people? It's so funny. I saw this movie called Snowpiercer. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie before. It um actually like it was like one of the Harry Weinstein one scenes or whatever last movies in the, the sense that like he got exposed after that. But he this movie was like really amazing. And then at the end, it didn't go to theaters because this that, and the other. And so it was kind, it's kind of this like undercover cult classic following. And that the premise is like the world, they sprayed all this stuff into the sky to, to, to defeat global warming. But they ended up overdoing it and they ended up freezing the earth. But this guy saw that coming. And so he started building this self-sufficient train that would just run forever and run around the earth. And it was, you know, self-powered. And then that way everyone could survive earth freezing over on this train. And so he kind of could see the future coming. He goes, this is going to work. He warned everybody, buy my tickets to my train. And then it's true, the, the whole earth freezes over. And the only place to survive is this train. And then this train, it was like based off a comic book turned into a movie. It's built set up in this class system. And there's the third class and they literally eat cockroaches and made into bars. And that's what they eat every single meal. And they're the workers. And then the middle class is kind of, you know, like the accountants and the, you know, whatever. And they have some food. And then there's the luxury that live at the top. And they have raves and spas and a swimming pool. And they even have like an aquarium in the front. And it's, it's everyone's living this way. And the whole thing is this sort of rebellion of the third class. They, you know, they do this thing and they break through to get to the front of the train. And then you find out in the end too, there was a guy working in the third class with the conductor of the train planning this revolution because they said we got to kind of get you guys keep you guys entertained every now and then to kind of keep order there needs to be a revolution every now and then yeah. to kind of keep people feeling like they're making progress and people said too like there's all this entertainment out there football games concerts that keep us like you know distracted so to speak right oh so the more that i look at exactly and then it's so funny because like the kids on the school there's the kids in the second class and the third class trains and they go to the school and the school and the school on this train is winston's the best winston's the best thank god for winston he saved us the whole world's cause wins and they have all these songs that are you know like praising this leader of the train and in the same ways i'm kind of like that's exactly what's going on here you know like we already have this class system there are people eating bugs like there are people telling us what to read in the schools like there are people just like so rich that they're just going to raves all day and hanging out in spas and then there are like and then actually you find out the children like like some of the pieces broke and now they have literal children running the train they find out there's like under the board and they go oh that system like like this guy makes it the top and he almost gets convinced and then they open it up and they see a child's under there um, because like that piece had broken however this train's going and they got to keep it so now they have little children and so I, I think the more it's it's that's what i'm saying like there's so many of these movies that the more you look at them you're like wait a minute oh like of course it could get worse they, that's they, they were telling the truth they were telling us happening yeah. right exactly now and so that's where you're like oh god yeah 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 so i think that's so then so again with this this textbook thing and what are they teaching us and where's this information coming from well it's, it's all coming from something and there's a reason 
you know, and I think I think I have this advantage because I, I I'm I'm a, I'm an exception as a as a child of America. Or was that not exception? Because I moved so much, much like an army kid or you know whatever. I moved like a million times, so I didn't have one consistent education. I was constantly getting different, and you know, never two strong friends, and never two my like my my hobbies were my friends, you know, and like like kind of just adapting, adapting, adapting. And so possibly that's why I have this kind of strange perspective where. No, I see things more as like a forest than the tree, but I'm like, yeah, just so many of these movies. I'm like, we're living in that. Like I said, like there's a book about the Great Depression and it got to the point that like the people could not afford anything. And so they're having to like live on these camps that their businesses supply. You know, it's like they work for, you know, Henry Ford or whatever, like Elon Musk. And then like, you know, like they don't have any money, but oh my God, he took us in and he gave us a house. And then they get so in debt that they're working for this guy to pay off the house that he provided. And then they have to shop at his grocery store where the, and then they get caught, 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 caught. And I'm like, how is that not exactly happening today? There's just no one guy that we're looking at, but we all are like so in debt that we can't afford a house that then we need to borrow their money to then be able to buy their food that is overpriced. And like, we're just kind of, it's, it's begun. And so that's what they say. Like there's two ways to enslave a nation weapon, you know, by guns or by debt. And I think it's, it's a hundred percent. And I think this so, is one of the ways out. I, I saw somewhere that, all the world's countries are in debt, like twenty-one trillion dollars in Senate. Okay. Back. Like so we just like what, 91, the, 91, 91, I think it's not, the, the whole entire the, the I think the the global GDP, like the global debt is equivalent to the global GDP right now. So if we were just like wipe all the debt clean, start over again, like so would that like economic like implications? I okay. So again, like what I heard someone say is if you know you're an adult, stop if you know you're an adult, stop digging. You know what I mean? It's like everyone's in debt. So let's all go, oops, we're all in debt. And like actually address it. However, I know that like one idea people had was get everyone so desperate and so, you know, like like one way this could go is that the economy crashes so much, prices get so expensive that everyone literally turns so desperate that then, you know, this like CBDC thing is they create a new currency and it's like also digital. So, you know, it's really, again, it's really hard to say like what's going to happen. I mean, because really, like really we could just hit insane hyperinflation and then really like you know, we hit like Germany, like Germany, like, wasn't it like $20,000 for a chicken, right? Like, I mean, we could hit that. We could hit this. We could do anything. We could revive like, like anything, anything really like could happen. You know, and I like, don't know. I'll make this up like this. Suppose, let's take the example. Let's, um, let's use the country of Austria, right? Let's suppose Austria owes the World Bank $100 billion, right? Mm -hmm. Austria says like, we can't afford the payment. We're not going to pay no more. Like what actually happens? Like, it's not like the World Bank becomes so, the owner of Austria, right? Like, right. How, what, what? I understand that's like, okay, and I really don't know a lot about it, but I'm pretty sure that's what's going on with, like, again, I don't know anything, but I'm pretty sure, like, I keep hearing, like, like rumors of Switzerland, mm -hmm. that apparently Switzerland has, like, 100%, like, 100%, they're completely insolvent, and now, but I have, like, no one's trying to, like, acknowledge it, and actually, like, everything's fine, and so now all these people are, like, bailing them out and trying to act like everything's fine, and so I think, again, I just think we're, like, uh, I don't know anything, but, like, you know, what's that? What in Switzerland's insolvent? Like, what is this sentence I'm saying? And like, what would that look like? You yeah. know, so I just think we're in for a show. And, and you think that any country would not do that would be Switzerland. You think Switzerland would be the last country, I, right? Apparently, like, the Do you think it was first banks, people putting money there to be safeguarded, you know? Right. And I guess apparently, like, because this, that, and the other, and they're like over risky things. And then if they were to start printing more, mm -hmm. it would trigger, like, like they can't print anymore, but also they don't have any more. Like, it's like, again, I don't know. Again, all this stuff I don't know about. And like, like, but it's, but it's, but it's, it's yeah. like, I would love to learn it. You know, it's like fascinating. And what do you do? It's, it's like chess. You know, what do you do? How much do you know about the gold standard from back in the day? I mean, I like I I, th I understand the idea of it of like like putting a value on dollars. You know, and I even had this conversation um with um my student's mom, uh, and I'll tell you the I'll tell you the true the true story of like what happened is basically my student um while we were tutoring we were learning about the homeless and she went and took a picture of him like kind of behind his back and he was like mom stop you know like like I really don't like when you um take pictures of me without telling me. And I was like, that's a true point, you know? And then I talked to his mom later and I was like, I see what you're saying. Like, I see why you wanted to take it because it's authentic. But, um, okay. So the point is like, for example, let's look at like, let's look at the action of taking a picture. 20 years ago, if you took a picture, you bought a digital, you bought a camera and you only have 30 pictures you could take. So every click is like an investment and an opportunity. These days, you can take a million and it's no. And so that's why we're not even, you know, it's like before you had to make this agreement, like, okay, we agree we're going to pose. Let's take this picture because we only have 30 chances. Now it doesn't matter at all. I think the same thing's happening like with our financial system and our dollar. We agree this dollar is worth this gold. Okay, this dollar counts. This dollar counts. This dollar counts. And then suddenly once they remove the value of a dollar, you can just print them forever. And so, yeah. Do you think the U.S. dollar will ever be at risk of not being the economy, the currency in the world? 
Yeah, that's like, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, that's what, like what people are studying now. I mean, like lots of people are looking into what happens next. And that's what I'm saying. It's like, there's so many intelligent people that like, if we put smart, like if we put the right people, there's plenty of people who know exactly what's going on and are all even how to solve this. Like, I just wish we could put like a smart committee. Um, you know, I just like, oh, it's like, that's why it's tough. That's what's so hard about playing video games. Like, I don't play too many video games, but like, you know, like these like city design games, these like city design games or like, so you're like, man, if this was a video game, we could fix this real quickly. Like, you know, but um, yeah, I think, I think so do a you, lot of these problems aren't too big to solve. They, so do you, right. you believe people are inherently good or inherently bad? I think good. Good. Um, and I just think like in the short term, you can get yourself caught up, caught up more and more and more and more and more into trouble. And, you know, and I think, I think there's like a big theme in, um, you know, I'm lucky that I grew up in like a house where I, you know, I have, I had, I had money, honestly. And I think a lot of people don't. And then when they start finding success, they start getting paid and they get paid. And actually they can, that's a predatory thing too, is like you make someone hyper successful and dependent on money. And then you can kind of take advantage of that. And yeah. Yeah. So I think people start off good and then they start wanting to kind of maintain either this sense of rich or whatever, or, you know, like you're working in these systems that aren't good. And, you know, it just takes being brave throughout the way and maybe, you know, stepping away from the temptation of, you know, making the soldier outfit, you know, you can get another job, but are you going to get paid that well? So yeah. again, it's like tough. It's so freaking tough. The world's tough. Yeah. Not fair. Hey, can you talk about why you had to move around so much as a kid? Oh, um, uh, like my parents got divorced when I was nine and then I mean, why not even, I don't know. It's just like, like indecisive parents, just like moving, parents moving, just, moving, 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 like, 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 like divorce. And then like for some reason, like, I guess I wasn't liking, like my parents didn't like that school. So I moved to another. I mean, I just, I really, I think by college, by the time I finished schooling, I've been to like 12 schools. And you grew up in the United States? Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. What, like different states or? Michigan. Yeah. Born in Michigan, okay. outside of Michigan and then North Carolina. Okay. Chicago, Florida, Tennessee. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and then then I always was like West Coast, I'm so cool, <laughs> and I like it here. I like it here, all right. I yeah. um, so you've been here like two or three years, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And what what why why Seattle versus the Bay or L.A. or some place else on the West Coast? Actually, first I was thinking California, but then I was like looking at the prices and also kind of the stereotype of California is like everyone's like, you know, the stereotype is like looking good, you know, a little bit judgmental um you know like like it's like it's a very competitive atmosphere especially for acting or you know entertainment and i knew i wanted to get into educational entertainment and i just felt like seattle like was a little more easygoing you didn't always have to have your hair brushed yeah. and that probably like i felt like i could really fit in or be a little bit exceptional in seattle whereas in california i didn't feel like i could I would probably kind of try try to be, you know, I'd be like yeah. trying to be cool there. Cause like, I, I don't know, California intimidated me, but I just feel like Seattle would be better for my personality. So I might've asked you this before, but what are your goals for your company at like the next three or six months? Like what are your short-term goals for your company in the next six months? Well, I'd like us to get our new website out at some point. Uh, I would like, I mean, I would be cool if I could get some like really quality songs that, you know, lots of people can agree sound good. Uh, and just kind of keep my team you know, happy and um, working hard. I think if, if, if I still have everyone on board on my team and, you know, I didn't do much to change that shows that things are really going well. Um, if everyone's still enjoying their work. And so, yeah, that like at this point, I'm just trying to build a strong team that, you know, loves their work. And so Kelly, how do you take care of yourself either physically or mentally? How do you make sure you take care of yourself with all the stuff you're doing? Well, like I said, I, I don't know. I'm kind of like, I cut a lot of stuff out of my life, a lot of distractions. Um, I don't know. I try to like, I have some, you know, good, good influences around me and good friends and I'm pretty easily influenced. And so like, yeah, like, you know, some of my friends are like, I mean, like, to be honest, like into like tea. So like, I don't know, drinking like lots of different tea and learning like what different teas do at different times. And, you know, like, I don't know, just wanting a little bit more nu nutrition. And I guess, again, the other thing too, would be trying not to do too much and getting people to help you and getting people help. And I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. That's so it. anything else you want to talk about? um yeah we covered so much and yeah i just think you know uh, i don't know okay i mean i guess i'll just i don't know i'm like trying to think of something clever i mean i guess it's just like this is like you know really jump into it but i think back in like you know what do they say like the 30s or the 20s or the 40s they removed all financial literacy from education and so if you feel stupid and you feel like you don't know anything it's not your fault it's not your fault Walt to the vault i was thinking like we should say something <laughs> like that it's literally not your fault it was done on purpose um but you know, if you just think of it logically, if you could figure out how to invest, you're literally just going to make money. And then you're like, ha 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 ha, screw you work. 
and society like i just figured out how to make money and i hacked you guys at your own game and now what are you gonna do with me so you know just just believe in yourself if you want or do whatever you want yeah. hey kelly thanks for being a gamer thank yeah. you oh and i got you a gift oh wow thanks here you go these amazing fruit delights they're like you know really good and candy. This are good for me, oh yeah, that was the last time too thanks you're welcome you're welcome thanks everyone for joining and write in the comments your favorite thing of today's uh today's today's podcast yes and what yes. you'd like to know more about and any of your favorite one-liner jokes all right thanks everyone <laughs> see you